Chapter 31 Lu Boyan's Sudden Appearance at the Police Station You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 31 Lu Boyan's Sudden Appearance at the Police Station Su Jianan was never one to avoid dealing with her problems. At first, she had been unwilling to accept the reality of her mother's passing. But at the same time, she also knew that she had to come to terms it at some point. That way, she could move on and live a good life, just like her mother would have wanted. Back then, she had sat before her mother's grave for one day and one night. She sat there until she saw the first trace of daybreak emerging from the east, the rising sun of a new day. At that moment she had a revelation. She realized that even though her mother had been turned to ashes and buried beneath layers of ochre, even though she had lost her mother forever, none of that would affect the sun's rising and the moon's descent. Life had to go on. Even a reality as painful as her mother's death she had accepted, yet she somehow could not bring herself to do as Jiang Shaokai said. Find out how Lu Boyan truly felt about her. It was Lu Boyan who had promised Han Ruashi that he would get a divorce. It was Lu Boyan who had told her that he had no interest in little girls, that this mutually beneficial marriage would come to an end after two years. But it was also Lu Boyan who came to her rescue when she was kidnapped and assaulted. Also, the light brush of their lips from last night, the kiss they had shared in the car. She did not dare delve deeper into it. Lu Boyan had told her that he would be divorcing her, yet he protected her and even kissed her. Just when she had ascertained his feelings through his actions, his words would force her back into doubt. If that was the case, she might as well not think about it at all. After she finished lunch and cleared away all utensils, she began to wonder if she should send Lu Boyan a text to express her gratitude. The problem was, they had never exchanged texts or calls with each other before. If she sent out a text all of a sudden, would Lu Boyan even know that it was from her? Calling him seemed quite unnecessary. Forget it, she thought. I'll just tell him tonight. It'll be the same thing anyways. Well, Su Jianan did not have the chance to do that. Just when Jiang Shaokai returned from lunch, their colleagues from the vice squad came rushing in. We've received police reports of a homicide in Mingyan district. An entire family was murdered. Shao Kai, Jianan, you're with us. Situations like these were frequent. Su Jianan and Jiang Shaokai sprang into action. The swiftly gathered their things and hopped onto a police car to visit the crime scene. Lu Boyan's workload was not heavy today. It was rare that he could make it home early, yet there were no signs of Su Jianan when he got home. Young madam hasn't returned from work yet, Uncle Su told him. Young master, would you like the cook to start preparing your dinner? Lu Boyan frowned. No need. Get the ingredients ready. I'll wait for her. Uncle Su left to instruct the cook to ready the dinner ingredients. By 6 p.m., there were still no signs of Su Jinan. Since Lu Boyan was upstairs, Uncle Su took the chance to call Su Jinan. There was some kind of ruckus over her end of the line, so Uncle Su had to raise his voice. Young madam, why haven't you come home? I've got some work on my hands. I need to do overtime today. Su Jianan said. Uncle Su, please ask the cook to prepare Lu Boyan's dinner. I can't make it back today. My phone's about to die too, so I'm hanging up first, okay? When Uncle Su told Lu Boyan about Su Jianan's overtime, Lu Boyan frowned. Did she tell you when she'll be back? No, she didn't. But I've already called the station. Apparently, there's a family massacre down at Mingyan District. It would keep young madam and her colleagues busy for a while. Lu Boyan's frown deepened, though he did not comment further, only asked Uncle Su to instruct the cook to skip dinner preparations. After that, he left the villa. He drove to the summit clubhouse. Thought the clubhouse was by no means famous. In fact, the place did not even have an official name. Everyone just called it the Summit Clubhouse. Its general popularity was less than even the KTV nightclub over at the pedestrian zone. 
However, this clubhouse was the go.to place among the rich and wealthy. More than anywhere else, it was a symbol of social status and power. This was also the only clubhouse Lu Boyan would ever set foot in. The clubhouse was open to its members only, whose memberships were all obtained through direct invitation. Without a membership invitation, no amount of money could get one past the door. The list of members included billionaires from not only the various cities within the country, but from abroad as well. Everybody knew that by spending a few hours here, they might end up gaining a few connections or even securing new business deal. Everyone in the circle was well aware that the Summit Clubhouse was the true cream de la cream of all clubhouses in the country. Lou Boyan owned the entire clubhouse, including the private suite on the top floor. The suite could only be accessed through a private elevator, which he now rode. When he entered the suite, there were already two occupants sitting inside. One of them was Xin Yuchuan, who wore a suit. The other one was Mu Siju. Mu Siju, a man with a clean dot shaven head and an imposing look, definitely did not look like someone to be trifled with. His features were hardened and intense, and his arms were lined with bulging muscles. The way he sat on the leather couch with a four-dot figure leg cross and a cigarette in his mouth bespoke his wild, untamable belligerence. He looked as if he were some kind of badass who could stir up a massacre and kill dozens of people within minutes. Brows raised, Mu Siju glanced at Lu Boyan. Well, well, well. Look who's here. Didn't you say you're not coming? Wife didn't come home, I bet, Xin Yuchuan goaded as he took a lighter from Mu Siju to light his own cigarette. A certain somebody used his recent illness as an excuse to get off work early today. Didn't expect to find that his wife has to do overtime. Mu Siju burst into laughter. Before his laughter subsided, Lu Boyan's chilly stare swept towards him. Well, he had nothing to fear at all, because that stare was aimed at Xin Yuchuan. Xin Yuchuan shivered all over. Hey, hey. There's poor tea in front of you. Freshly dot prepared, that stuff costs a grand per fifty grams. They just arrived at the clubhouse today. The tea set, which was immaculately cleaned, was meant for Lu Boyan's private use whenever he was here. He picked up a cup and breathed in the tea's aroma. Tea's very good. Xin Yuchuan felt instant relief. Just when he was about to smile, Lu Boyan put down the cup and said, but you're still taking a trip to Nepal. People had been right in calling that place land of the gods since only godlike beings could live and survive there. For one, the place was constantly filled with dust and grime. One could put on ten masks all at once and it would not make a darn difference. Having been to Nepal a few times, Xin Yuchuan swore he would never set foot on the place again. Now, he just wanted to lie down and play dead. What? Why? On what grounds? When you were at the hospital, it was all because of me that Su Jianan would even be there to see you. What the hell did I do this time? At that point, the injustice and anger Xin Yuchuan was feeling in his heart could not be eased no matter how loud he yelled. Lu Boyan took a sip of tea nonchalantly. You gave her a fright. Xin Yuchuan was rendered completely speechless. Mu Siju looked at Xin Yuchuan mockingly. Man, you're F asterisk king useless. After all these years, is there even a single thing Lu Boyan did that he would want Su Jianan to know about? Why not just pick one from there and use it as leverage? Lu Boyan looked at Mu Siju coldly. Oh, so you're willing to replace Xin Yuchuan for the Nepal trip? Mu Siju shut up instantly. Xin Yuchuan was still wallowing in his grievances. Truth was, he had already thought of using those things to threaten Lu Boyan. But Lu Boyan had told Xin Yuchuan that he had over a hundred ways to prevent Su Jianan from believing in whatever Xin Yuchuan said to her. In fact, he could even make Su Jianan believe Xin Yuchuan to be a complete nutcase. In the end, Xin Yuchuan had to leave to make preparations for his business trip. Lu Boyan and Mu Siju stayed in the suite to discuss matters. It was already past midnight by the time Lu Boyan came home from the clubhouse. 
Su Jianan still had not returned. He knew that in Su Jianan's line of work, this was how things usually were. If things got hectic, she would not even have time to blink let alone come home. He dialed Su Jianan's number and heard the operator's voice saying that Su Jianan's phone had been shut off. Young madam told me just now that her phone was about to die. Uncle Su appeared suddenly. Young master, you should go get some rest. Lu Boyan nodded and went back to his room. The next morning, there were still no signs of Su Jianan. On the surface, Lu Boyan seemed to be fine and dandy, but when he left for the company, he took a roundabout route just so he could pass by the police station. Coincidentally, he had already noticed Su Jianan from afar. Su Jianan stood at the intersection and she still wore yesterday's clothes. Her dark tresses was pulled back into a messy bun, which looked a little bedraggled and loose. The twigs on the trees had filtered and split the morning sunlight into thread. Like streaks. The light fell upon her face gently, giving her profile a beautiful glow. She was walking side by side with Jiang Shaokai. Each of them had a cup of coffee and a bag of takeaway coffees in their hands. As they walked, they were laughing and chatting with each other. There seemed to be a lot of chemistry between them. The car neared, and Lu Boyan could now see the way Jiang Shaokai was looking at Su Jianan. His gut told him that something was not right. Lu Boyan stepped on the accelerator. The 177 pulled up at the police station's entrance imposingly as if it were some unstoppable force. Su Jianan had ridden on Lu Boyan's car a few times, so she was very familiar with the sound of his car. Just that for a moment, she could not believe what she was seeing. When Lu Boyan stepped out of the car, she felt like she was dreaming. However, the Lu Boyan before her eyes seemed so real. The dark dot-colored tailored suit accentuated his tall and perfect physique. His tie, which came in the same brand as his suit, gave him a corporate, businessman air. When he lifted his hand, the cuff of his white shirt would peek out from under the sleeve of his blazer, revealing a delicate but modest cufflink. Subtle details like these made him look like the perfect gentleman. His handmade Oxford shoes were spotlessly clean, as if they held not a single speck of dust on them. Each step he took carried his idiosyncratic aura of prominence. For a moment, Su Jianan was unable to her eyes away from him. Women who were passing by stared at him overtly. The only thing missing from the picture was one of those women coming up to him to chat him up. Lu Boyan's eyes were locked on Su Jianan from the start, as if Su Jianan was the only thing that existed in his world. When Lu Boyan reached her, his hand automatically went to relieve Su Jianan of the bag, which contained six huge cups of coffee. Only then did Su Jianan snap out of her haze. What are you doing here? I mean you won't pass by the station. On the way to the company. So. I can't come see you if it's not on the way. Lu Boyan stroked the apple of Su Jianan's cheek. You didn't get any sleep last night. The dark circles under her eyes looked heavier than they had been yesterday. At the mention of last night, Su Jianan felt the sudden urge to cry. While everyone else was in bed, she and a couple of icy dead bodies had spent the entire night in the morgue. She could not even count the amount of coffee it had taken for her to stay awake. Nope. There's been a murder case. I can't afford any sleep. I'll be busier than you were a while ago. It completely escaped her how aggrieved her own voice had sounded. A smile formed on Lu Boyan's lips. He wrapped an arm around Su Jianan's waist and guided her into the building. Before Su Jianan knew it, Captain Yen, Xiao Ying, and the rest of her colleagues had already been giving her suggestive looks. She shifted uncomfortably but Lu Boyan tightened his hold on her waist. He bent down, asking, have you guys had breakfast? Not yet. Su Jianan felt as if the stairs of the entire vice squad would soon burn holes on her body. I'll have someone send over breakfast for everyone, okay? Lu Boyan's tone held nothing but pure affection. Moon chasing house. Or somewhere else. Moo. Moon chasing house, 
then. She could practically hear those guys salivating. Lu Boyan smiled. Okay. Then, he looked as if another thought had come to him. How's your tongue? This time, Su Jianan played it smart. She turned around obediently and stuck out her tongue for Lu Boyan. I applied some cream yesterday. It's healed now. Her face had grown warm, and she struggled in his arms for a bit. You're going to be late for work. Lu Boyan glanced at his watch, looking as if he had only just realized the time. He let go of Su Jianan and politely bid farewell to everyone. Before he left, he leaned in to whisper into Su Jianan's ear. Breakfast will arrive in half an hour. Su Jianan did not snap out of it despite the fact that Lu Boyan's figure had vanished from the entrance for quite some time. When she looked at her colleagues, the looks on their faces were nothing but salacious. All of a sudden, Captain Yen looked at Xiaoying caringly. Honey, how's your tongue? Playing along, Xiaoying stretched out her tongue. I applied some cream yesterday. It's healed now. Su Jianan felt a sudden chill. As if we could ever be that gross. Chapter 32 To her, he's the most dependable you are listening at novel full audio. Su Jianan turned and ran into the medical examination team's office. A loud burst of laughter rang behind her and she flushed. She sat down and hid her face behind the computer screen, but saw her red face from the dark screen. She had never thought that Lu Boyan would come and had not imagined that she would feel as if she was reborn after seeing Lu Boyan. She had forgotten all her fatigue. Instead, she felt that it was a beautiful morning. Jiang Shaokai entered and saw Su Jianan staring at her reflection in the computer screen dazedly. There was joy in her sparkling eyes that was hard to hide. He looked at her meaningfully and said, You complained to him earlier. Eh. Su Jianan did not understand what he was saying. We have always worked hard when there are big cases, and we have already worked hard for a year. Jiang Shaokai said leisurely. You have never complained to your brother. But when you saw him earlier, you said that you hadn't slept a wink last night sadly. Dot. It, it seemed like it. Do you want me to reenact the scene with Xiaoying and Captain Yen and show you how sad you looked earlier? Jiang Shaokai said eagerly. Lame. Su Jianan switched on the computer, but did not do anything else. Why did she complain only to Lu Boyan? Could it be that she felt in her heart that Lu Boyan was more dependable than Su Cheng? How was that possible? Disregarding Su Cheng, he should not even be comparable to Jiang Shaokai. Su Jianan was feeling confused when she heard her colleagues cheer from behind the glass door. Breakfast from Moon Chasing House had arrived and filled more than half of the conference table. Just nice. Captain Yen clapped his hands and gestured to everyone. Come and eat while we have our meeting. Everyone sat down. Xiaoing sighed, Moon Chasing House has never done delivery, one has to make reservations at least half a month before just to eat breakfast there. Otherwise, you won't be able to get a spot. He could get so many things delivered here in half an hour. That's incredible. Jianan, if I follow you in the future, would I have meat to eat? Su Jianan calmly picked up a soup dumpling and placed it in vinegar. The wounds on the six deceased showed that they were all tortured prior to their deaths. The murderer is either a pervert or he must hate the deceased and their families. Su Jianan turned the topic toward their work. Even Captain Yen would not dare to interrupt her when she got serious. Her colleagues could only stop teasing her and start working. Su Jianan thought that they would be able to rest after working till 2 or 3 in the afternoon. However, they slowly discovered more and more clues and ascertained that the crime was committed by someone who knew the victims. The murderer was determined to be located within a very small area and as long as they followed the clues, they would be able to discover the murderer who had taken six lives that night. She did not feel tired, and instead, her brain even got excited. In the afternoon, together with testimony from witnesses and their deductions, they were sure of who the murderer was. 
the team moved out and quickly started the capture. Su Jianan and Jiang Shaokai's work ended. The bell tower by the Pu River chimed five times. It was five o'clock. Su Jianan sighed deeply and switched off her computer and straightened up her messy desk. She suddenly heard someone calling from outside, Jianan. Look who's here. Su Jianan looked out and saw the tall figure. He had taken off his suit jacket and his tie and looked more casual than this morning. The top button of his shirt had also been undone. This had not only not affected his handsome appearance, it showcased his good figure. He was the most idot catching and tasteful man wearing a white shirt Su Jianan had ever seen. The girl's eyes shone as he walked past them. Su Jianan was still in a daze when Lu Boyan arrived before her. Can we leave? Yep. Su Jianan only remembered to nod after some time. Lu Boyan held her hand naturally and with familiarity. He led her out of the office and left the police station. His car was parked in front of the station. Su Jianan sat at the passenger seat and only reacted when she saw Lu Boyan walking to the driver's seat. She asked, What are you doing here? Your chief said that you can knock off around this time. You know our chief. Su Jianan asked with wide eyes. Lu Boyan's eyebrows picked up, not denying it. Su Jianan stared at him and continued asking. So. You just happened to knock off and just happened to pass by the police station and just like what happened when I was blocked by those high dot schoolers, you just happened to meet me when I knocked off. Her tone was weird and Lu Boyan glanced her to discover that the little monster was looking at him steadily. Her bright almond dot shaped eyes had a hint of a smile in them as if she could sense everything. He narrowed his eyes and asked, Do you know something? Guess. Su Jianan closed her eyes and leaned back leisurely, a hint of a smile on the corners of her lips. It was not difficult to guess. Shen Yuchuan had picked up the call from Su Cheng. Shen Yuchuan must have told Su Cheng that he was in a meeting. If Su Cheng had told Su Jianan that, then Su Jianan would have easily seen through his excuse of just happening to knock off and meeting her coincidentally. She knew everything, just like how she knew why he was here. Lu Boyan turned to look at Su Jianan to discover that she had already fallen asleep. Her head was leaning against the car and she slept deeply, her expression exhausted. He stopped the car at the side of the road and placed her jacket over her. Then, he pressed down on the accelerator and went on the highway and returned home. The 177 sped on the road, unleashing its power. Lu Boyan glanced at Su Jianan who was on the passenger seat occasionally, a faint smile climbing up his lips. The car had never seemed to drive so smooth under his hands. At their door, Lu Boyan could not rouse Su Jianan no matter what. She seemed to be like a little animal who had entered hibernation, losing all consciousness, and would not awake until spring. Lu Boyan watched as she curled up in his jacket tightly and could not help but feel his heart softened. He suddenly felt that she was his person and could not bear to interrupt her deep sleep. He opened the passenger door and carried Su Jianan down. However, he had not expected that Tang Yulan had arrived and was sitting in the living room. When she saw Lu Boyan carrying Su Jianan back, she was extremely anxious. She hurried up and asked, What's wrong with Jianan? She's all right. Lu Boyan placated his mother, She's just fallen asleep. She must have worked overtime last night. Poor thing. Tang Yulan's eyes were filled with pity. Quick, take her back to sleep in the room. Lu Boyan carried Su Jianan upstairs. He subconsciously wanted to send her back to her room, but was aware that Tang Yulan was following behind him. He had no choice but to carry Su Jianan back to his room. Tang Yulan helped Lu Boyan settle Su Jianan. Su Jianan seemed to be very familiar with the place. She wriggled into the blankets, turned over and hugged Lu Boyan's pillow the moment she laid down. Tang Yulan was not suspicious at all, and would naturally not notice that there was not a single thing in the room that belonged to Su Jianan. 
She only thought of not disturbing Su Jinan's sleep and pulled Lu Boyan down with her. Lu Boyan only asked then, Mom, what are you doing here? Uncle Su had mentioned that Lu Boyan and Su Jinan's relationship had improved recently. Tang Yulan was skeptical, so she had come unannounced to check up on them. The scene she had seen earlier had made her believe what Uncle Su said completely. Of course, Tang Yulan would not say all that. She took a sip of tea and said, I came to tell you guys something. But since Jinan is asleep, let's talk about it tomorrow. She turned to look at Uncle Su and said, have someone prepare a room. I shall not go home tonight. Uncle Su went to prepare the room personally. Lu Boyan thought of Su Jinan who was in his room and frowned. Mom, I'll go and take a look at Jinan. He was afraid that Su Jinan would wake up suddenly and charge downstairs and ask him for an explanation. Everything would be over then. Not to mention that Tang Yulan would find out that they had been acting all this while, Tang Yulan might not be able to take such a blow. Hold on. Tang Yulan smiled and looked at her son. First answer my question. Did you especially go to pick up Jinan? Yes. Even if he did not Lu Boyan could only admit it now. Tang Yulan smiled brilliantly, why would you think of picking her up? It's not like she did not drive to work. Lu Boyan knew that he could not hide it from his mother and could only tell the truth. She did not sleep at all last night, I was worried about her driving. I know now. Go upstairs. Tang Yulan took a sip of tea and smiled with satisfaction. Lu Boyan returned to his room. Su Jinan had kicked the blankets away but had not awakened. She hugged his pillow and slept deeply. She would not know even if she was being sold. He helped to cover her up with blankets and sat on the sofa not far away from the bed. He looked at Su Jinan who was sleeping deeply and fell into deep thoughts. Since she had long known that he had rushed down especially when she had been surrounded, then why had she not asked? Or could it be that? She had been a smart arse and thought of an answer herself. Lu Boyan sat there until the sky turned dark and Su Jianan kicked the blankets off several times. However, she showed no signs of waking up. Tang Yulan came to knock on the door and asked Lu Boyan to go down for dinner. He said, Jianan still has not awakened. Tang Yulan peeked in at Su Jianan and smiled. You don't know about this, she's probably going to sleep until tomorrow morning. Ever since Su Jinan's mother passed away, Tang Yulan had stayed in contact with Su Jinan. Su Jinan would occasionally tell her about her work, so she knew a little about Su Jinan's habits. Lu Boyan knew almost all the details of Su Jinan's life except for how much she loved to sleep. She was going to sleep until tomorrow morning. He anticipated her reaction when she woke up and discovered herself in his bed. Tang Yulan turned around to discover Lu Boyan smiling. It was a thoughtful and anticipatory smile. Lu Boyan's father had also smiled like this while looking at her. She pulled on Lu Boyan's hand and said, I have never known why you refused to meet Jianan for so many years. But I know that it is not because you hate her. Lu Boyan's steps paused. Mom, there are some things that I cannot tell you now. I know. Tang Yulan naturally knew that Lu Boyan was hiding things from her. But she trusted her son unconditionally. Tell me when you can. But promise me that for me, and for Jianan, that you won't do anything silly because of your father's death. I've already lost your father. I cannot lose you too. Also, you have Jianan now. I know my limits. Lu Boyan said. Mom, you can rest assured Tang Yulan clutched Lu Boyan's hand tightly, but nodded in the end, and then released his hand slowly. She vaguely knew that perhaps that was the reason why Lu Boyan had refused to meet Su Jinan. But she also knew that if Lu Boyan really wanted to do that, nothing could stop him. Chapter 33 You're Cuter Asleep You Are Listening at Novel Full Audio. After dinner, Lu Boyan had two video conferences lasting about an hour long with branch companies abroad. It was about 11 when he lay in bed. 
Su Jianan was still deeply asleep, hugging his pillow. Half of her face was buried in the soft pillow, and she seemed like a child seeking a sense of safety. Lu Boyan carefully pulled the pillow from her hug. She frowned in dissatisfaction, her hands clawing everywhere on the bed. Lu Boyan had just laid down and was caught by her. She was like a child who had found her beloved toy, and she held on to Lu Boyan, her calves brushing Lu Boyan's legs twice and then, pinned him down. She was not wearing a camisole nightdress like last time. She just buried her face in his chest and the hot breath blew on his chest. A soft body part stuck close to him thoughtlessly. However, Lu Boyan felt an even stronger feeling than before. The blood in his entire body boiled and rushed toward a certain part of his body. However, she slept innocently like a child. Lu Boyan sighed and then sucked on her collarbone revengefully, and then again. Then, he released her and went to take a cold shower. After calming down and returning, Lu Boyan's pillow had once again been taken over. He took it back helplessly and Su Jianan looked as if she was about to cry. He hugged her and patted her back as if placating a child who had been shocked. She only stopped frowning after a long time and resumed sleeping peacefully. She was the little monster, and always seemed to be up for a fight and seemed extremely courageous. But why did she look so sensitive and afraid while sleeping? Lu Boyan looked at her in the dim yellow light from the wall and felt that the little monster seemed more and more like a pitiful little animal. He could not help but hug her even more tightly. This seemed useful to the little monster and she sighed comfortably. Her little hands searched around Lu Boyan's chest and in the end, she hugged Lu Boyan's waist and slept comfortably. Lu Boyan was touched by her, and the feeling that he had barely suppressed earlier started once more. However, he still bore down on it in order not to frighten the person he was hugging. Lu Boyan had the most difficult time falling asleep that night. Su Jianan regained her senses blurrily very early the next morning. She felt as if she had slept for a lifetime. It was a long night with no nightmares and she had slept well. She had never slept so well since her mother passed away. However, she felt that something was odd. There was a familiar scent as she breathed. When she opened her eyes, the first thing that she saw was a man's chest. When she looked up, it was Lu Boyan. They had slept in the same bed before, so it was not a big deal. But why was she hugging Lu Boyan's waist? Why was she stuck to Lu Boyan? Why was he hugging her? For a moment, Su Jianan's mind was frozen. How could something so intimate happen between her and Lu Boyan? When she could finally react, Su Jianan suddenly released Lu Boyan and bounced up like a startled spring, a look of fear on her face. Lu Boyan was sleep deprived. He frowned and opened his eyes having been startled away by Su Jianan's movements. Then, he got up as well. The sleeping robe he was wearing was tied loosely, revealing his muscular chest. He got up elegantly and lazily, as if he were a slowly awakening noble. Su Jianan watched him and was almost dazed by him, disregarding the situation. Fortunately, she found her voice in the end. But Lu Boyan covered her mouth the moment she opened it. Lower your voice. Mom is sleeping next door. She came over yesterday afternoon. Su Jianan tried hard to think, but her last memory of yesterday ended on Lu Boyan's car. She did not know how she got home, much less seeing Tang Yulan. Was this selective memory loss? Lu Boyan, how did I come home? She asked uneasily. I carried you back. Lu Boyan swept Su Jianan with his eyes. What have you been eating recently? You're heavier than last time. Also, I had Uncle Su lock your room for now. Then, he got off the bed and walked toward the bathroom elegantly. Su Jianan finally realized that she had been sleeping since yesterday, so she did not know of Tang Yulan's arrival. But, her weight definitely had not increased. She was very certain of this. Lu Boyan was defaming her. Hang on. She rushed up to Lu Boyan and said smilingly, Lu Boyan, 
I heard you have very serious misophobia. Let me tell you one thing. I didn't shower before laying on your bed for an entire night, Lu Boyan paused as expected. Su Jianan harumphed with satisfaction and then rushed into the bathroom. She even made a face at him before closing the door. The sound of water running could be heard from the bathroom. Lu Boyan suddenly thought of something and smiled. He sat on the sofa with a leisurely pose. Fifteen minutes later, Su Jianan indeed peeked her head out pathetically, Lu Boyan. Lu Boyan looked at her with a lazy gaze, what is it? I was wrong. Su Jianan said very sincerely. I was really wrong. I won't sleep on your bed without showering again. Will you please get my clothes for me? The result of being hasty was indeed the devil. She had just wanted to annoy Lu Boyan earlier, and had forgotten that she did not have any clothes here. And, the clothes that she had taken off were all wet. Lu Boyan crossed his legs elegantly and said, Your room is locked. I can't go in. Get Uncle Su to open the door. Mum will get suspicious. Su Jinan felt like crying, then what shall I do? Lu Boyan sized her up and said, so you're not wearing anything right now. Su Jinan's stupid subconscious wanted to nod, but then she reacted. What kind of gangster question was Lu Boyan asking? Her face immediately reddened and she glared at Lu Boyan angrily, are you going to help me or not? Lu Boyan smiled relaxedly and said, if I don't help you, would you dare to walk out here? Dot. Su Jianan indeed did not dare to. A wise woman would not fight when the odds are against her. She thought to herself and decided to go down the gentle path. Brother Boyan. She felt like crying, and her tear-filled eyes looked at him pitifully and pleadingly. There was a hint of pink on her pale cheeks and she blinked her innocent eyes. She looked extremely like a little bunny who had been wronged. It made one feel even more like bullying her. Lu Boyan could not help but think of the beautiful sight behind the door, and he swallowed. He stood up and walked to the closet to retrieve his shirt for her, hiding his unnaturalness. Su Jianan did not even have time to thank him before she slammed the door shut and quickly donned on Lu Boyan's shirt. His shirt was long and wide. Su Jianan felt that it was quite safe and she pushed the door open confidently. There had never been a woman who had touched Lu Boyan's clothing. But Lu Boyan felt, at that very moment, that he was willing to have Su Jianan dress like this for the rest of his life. Only before him. The long and wide white shirt enveloped her slender body. She must have felt that the sleeves were bothersome and had rolled them up her arms. The top two buttons were undone, revealing her beautiful collarbone. No matter how long the shirt was, it only reached her bottom, and her long straight legs swayed in front of him. The shirt moved along with the lines of her body, challenging his willpower. There was a series of knocking and then they heard Tang Yulan's voice. Boyan, are you guys up? Su Jianan looked down at her clothes. It would be bad if Tang Yulan saw it. She quickly mouthed to Lu Boyan, what should I do? Lu Boyan tugged on Su Jianan's hands and stuffed her back into the blankets. Then, he wrapped her up tightly before opening the door. Tang Yulan smiled happily outside the door and asked, you're awake. What about Jianan? Su Jianan curled up in the blankets and shouted at the door, Mum, morning. Morning. Tang Yulan looked into the room and smiled warmly. Get up since you're awake. I made breakfast and we can eat soon. Su Jianan nodded frantically. Tang Yulan saw that she was curled up in the blankets and was flushed and then, she looked at Lu Boyan's slightly messy clothes. She smiled a secretive smile and turned to head downstairs. Su Jianan slowly realized that Tang Yulan must have misunderstood something. She bit the blankets. How embarrassing. Uncle Su was very thoughtful. He immediately sent the maid upstairs to get clothing for Su Jianan after Tang Yulan went down. Su Jianan felt that Uncle Su was her savior. 
she immediately went into the changing room to change her clothes while Lu Boyan went to shower. It was already 7.30 a.m. by the time the two were prepared. Su Jianan saw that it was still early, so she closed the door and said to Lu Boyan seriously. Just like last time, I didn't mean to hug you. Furthermore, I didn't know I slept with you this time. She frowned slightly. Something seemed wrong with her statement. Forget it, she shall say what she had to first. I've said before that I'm used to hugging things close to me while I sleep. In other words, I will hug it even if it's a rock lying beside me. Do you understand? Lu Boyan frowned and then tousled Su Jinan's long hair forcefully. You're cuter when you're asleep. She would just rub herself in his chest and was very obedient. Su Jianan was confused. Did he understand or not? She followed him out, Lu Boyan. Lu Boyan held her hand and led her downstairs. Su Jianan was afraid that Tang Yulan would hear them and did not say anything. She followed behind Lu Boyan obediently, seeming like an obedient wife to Tang Yulan. Tang Yulan smiled happily. Su Jianan saw that Tang Yulan was very happy and felt her mood lifting as well. She suddenly thought of what happened yesterday and said, Mom, I didn't know you came over last night. She looked at Lu Boyan resentfully and asked, Why didn't you wake me up? Lu Boyan spread jam on a slice of bread and handed it to Tang Yulan. He glanced at Su Jianan and said, You were sleeping like a pig. It's all right. Tang Yulan smiled. I came to tell you guys something and see you guys on the way. It's nothing urgent. I'm holding a charity auction in the City Garden Hotel tonight. Jianan, come with Boyan. Su Jianan nodded and said, All right. One more thing. Tang Yulan's expression turned grave. She looked at Su Jianan, Su Hong, Su Yuan Yuan, and her mother might come. She was afraid that Su Jianan would be unhappy but why would the three of them have much impact on Su Jianan? She smiled brilliantly and said, Oh, Mom, do you want me to help entertain the guests? Tang Yulan paused and then laughed heartily. A hint of a smile appeared on the corner of Lu Boyan's lips. Chapter 34 The Warm Red Stain You are listening at NovelFull.audio Su Jianan was dragged to have makeup put on her the moment she returned home in the afternoon. It was the same makeup artist as last time. But this time, Tang Yulan was also in the makeup room. Tang Yulan wore a low dot key gray bespoke suit and wore black leather heels. Her hair had been artfully arranged and her makeup suitable for the occasion. She wore a set of expensive emeralds, looking elegant and grand. She had a sophistication that was the result of several years of experience which made her seem extremely warm and kind. Su Jianan was stopped by Tang Yulan the moment she entered. Tang Yulan looked very excited as she said, Jianan, I decided to pick an evening gown for you. Will you try it on? We can change it to another if you don't like it. The makeup artist showed the evening gown to Su Jianan. The long evening gown was tight on the chest and waist. The upper part of it was lace and was covered in diamonds carefully. It was exquisite and luxurious, but understated. It was very elegant. There was a thin white belt at the waist and the skirt below flowed, making it seem especially elegant. The workmanship on the dress was exquisite and the material was good. It was obvious that it was expensive. Su Jianan could not find anything she was dissatisfied with. Furthermore, it had been a long time since she had worn anything a mother picked out for her. Even though it was a light pink dress, she still said, let me try it on. Su Jianan changed and emerged. Even the makeup artist's eyes brightened. She said, Mrs. Liu, this evening gown suits you very well no matter in terms of style or disposition. Your skin color makes the nude pink very bright and the nude pink also makes your skin seem paler and brighter. Old madam is really good at picking gowns. Su Jianan turned around toward Tang Yulan uncertainly and asked, Mom, is it really okay? She had rarely worn light pink clothing since her mother's death. 
she was not very confident wearing this color. Of course. Tang Yulan walked up and helped Su Jinan to arrange her skirts. It's too beautiful. I already said that my daughter Dotin Dot Law would wear this better than those internationally renowned models. Jinan, just wear this, what do you think? Su Jinan smiled, nodded and said, all right. Then you do your makeup. I'll wait for you downstairs. Oh right, Boyan's clothes are in the closet. Get him to change when he gets back later. Tang Yulan left for downstairs after she left the instructions. Su Jianan sat before the large mirror and allowed the makeup artist to do her work. About an hour later, they were finally done. Su Jianan heaved a sigh of relief. She heard the sound of the door opening just as she stood up. It was Lu Boyan. You're back. It was rare that she would smile the moment she sees him. She pointed at the closet, Mom said that your clothes are in there. Take them and get changed. We're going to leave soon. Lu Boyan did not move. He looked at Su Jianan up and down. Su Jianan walked up to him and twirled around, a smile that was as radiant as the afternoon smile on her face. Mom picked this gown for me. What do you think? She had on light makeup and her exquisite face looked flawless. One could not see any flaws in her clear almond dot shaped eyes. Her shoulders and beautiful collarbone were bare, showing off the beautiful lines of her upper body. It was very alluring. It was only when they were up close when Lu Boyan discovered that while Su Jianan was thin, the areas that were not supposed to be thin, were not thin at all. It seemed that his little monster had hidden depths. Su Jianan's already tiny confidence disappeared as Lu Boyan looked at her. Do you think it doesn't look nice? How could it be described as just nice? She was so beautiful he wanted to drag her back into the room and tear her gown into halves. Forget it. Su Jianan sniffed, anyway, I don't intend to change. Lu Boyan pulled her and said, when did I say it's not nice? You're so happy because my mother picked this gown for you. Was prancing around before him happily something that grown dot up Su Jianan would do. It was evident that she was in a good mood. No one has ever bought me clothes since my mother passed away. Su Jianan was a little sad. The clothes that my brother sent were all picked by his secretary. Lu Boyan's eyebrows picked up and he suddenly noticed the red mark on Su Jianan's collarbone. A hint of unnaturalness flashed in the depth of his eyes as his gaze fixed on it. Su Jianan thought he was looking somewhere else and wanted to scold him for being a gangster. However, the makeup artist was there, so she could only hold it back. She glared at Lu Boyan, flushing. Lu Boyan's lips picked up and he whispered in Su Jianan's ears, Even though you're not flat, there isn't much to see. I can't take too big of an advantage of you. Su Jianan was speechless. Lu Boyan called the makeup artist over and pointed at the mark on Su Jianan's collarbone. Cover it for her. Su Jianan had discovered the mark earlier this morning in the shower. But she had always had fragile skin, which marked even if she hid anything lightly. She thought that she had hit it accidentally or had been bitten by a mosquito, so she had not minded it. But Lu Boyan had instructed the makeup artist, and the makeup artist who was experienced smiled. Her mind felt as if it was exploding and her face flushed blood red. She glared at Lu Boyan angrily while Lu Boyan comforted her with familiarity, don't be angry. I'll be more careful next time. He was doing it to mislead others. Su Jianan stomped angrily, what has this to do with you? She's so stupid, Lu Boyan thought. This was his work, so how could it have nothing to do with him? However, the little monster might bite him if he said that. He did not say anything and went to get his clothes and got changed. We can cover this, the makeup artist comforted Su Jianan. Mrs. Lu, don't worry. Nobody can see anything once it's covered up. Don't be shy. Su Jianan felt like crying, things are not what you think they are. Lu Boyan changed and came out in a short while. 
He was still wearing a suit but had changed the knot of his tie. He had added a white pocket square to his shirt pocket. He looked noble and elegant, and every movement he made was like that of a gentleman. The man was an elegant elite at work and was like a noble at social events. He was mesmerizing no matter which angle you looked at. No wonder so many women were dazzled by him. Devil Spawn Trouble A certain devil came over and held Su Jinan's hand, leading her downstairs. Su Jinan struggled at first, but Lu Boyan remained unmoved. Indeed, when she saw Tang Yulan, she did not struggle again and was as obedient as a kitten. Tang Yulan was very pleased and smiled when she saw the two coming down hand in hand. The car is waiting outside. Let's go. There were two cars parked outside, belonging to Lu Boyan and Tang Yulan respectively. Su Jianan thought about it and slid her hand out of Lu Boyan's grasp and ran over. Mom, I'll ride in your car. What's wrong? Tang Yulan was afraid that the two were at loggerheads and her eyes were filled with worry. Dot, Mom, nothing's wrong. Lu Boyan walked over and looked at Su Jianan dotingly. She wants to chat with you. We'll both ride in your car. Tang Yulan smiled and held Su Jianan's hand. Then we'll take the back seat. Boyan, will you drive? All right. Lu Boyan took the keys the driver handed and slid into the driver's seat. Su Jianan looked at him gloomily. Why can't she get rid of this guy? The distance between the mansion and the hotel was rather large. Lu Boyan was focused on driving while Tang Yulan and Su Jianan chatted about things from 14 years ago in the back seat. 14 years ago, 10. Year. Old Su Jianan had a completely different character than she had now. Tang Yulan talked about how she used to follow Lu Boyan around calling him big brother. Su Jianan flushed. If she knew what would happen today, she would have chosen the Ice Princess path 14 years ago. She would not bother Lu Boyan at all. You used to call him Brother Boyan when you were little. Tang Yulan mimicked her child-like voice. It made me feel all soft inside. I, Su Jianan stuttered. I've forgotten everything. How could she forget? She used to call him Brother Boyan, sweetly, the word sounding as if they had been soaked in honey. Everyone who heard it would all feel sweet and warm and only Lu Boyan could not be bothered with her and would often scare her. Back then, she felt that Lu Boyan must hate her. Her tears would drip down and she would pout and turn to walk away. But then, he would make lollipops appear as if by magic and she would stop crying and smile and call him brother again. She had everything back then, and it was enough that Lu Boyan gave her a lollipop. Back then, she was so spineless. But it was not long before Tang Yulan brought Lu Boyan to America and she never saw him again. She never had such a tasty lollipop again either. At first, she was still sad for some time. Su Yi Cheng thought that it was because she missed Lu Boyan. She looked up tearfully at Su Yi Cheng and said, Brother, I want to eat lollipops. The kind that Brother Boyan gave me. Su Yi Cheng teased her for being a glutton and got his friend to bring her a large box of lollipops back from abroad. It was the same kind of lollipops, made with the same ingredients and recipe, and she received it in the same packaging. But she felt that it tasted different. She ate many of them, but never found the same taste that Lu Boyan gave her. Su Jianan sighed as she thought of it. Tang Yulan thought she was thinking of the past, and comforted her. It's all right that you've forgotten the past. You both have a future. Su Jianan only smiled. Tang Yulan was wrong. She remembered everything that happened in the past. But she and Lu Boyan would not have a future. Lu Boyan looked at Su Jianan's smile through the rearview mirror. He did not need to think to know what she was thinking about. Silly. They arrived at the location where the auction was taking place at 7 sharp. Tang Yulan brought Su Jianan around the location. Many guests arrived at 
Tang Yulan arranged for Lu Boyan to check on the items up for auction while she brought Su Jianan to the entrance to welcome the guests. The people in the circle already knew Su Jianan, and after the incident on social media where her details were dug out, Su Jianan was even more famous in the social circle. Tang Yulan had long released news that Su Jianan would be present tonight, and several women who were close with her mother came especially to see her. Jianan, we haven't met for a few years. You have grown to become a beautiful young woman, you even married the man of the dreams of several socialites in the city. Your mother can rest in peace. We all missed your mother in these years. Su Jianan had a good memory and could still smile and greet the ladies by their names accurately. The ladies all smiled happily and wanted to treat Su Jianan like their own daughters. It might be true that they missed her mother, but Su Jianan chose to smile when they said they came especially to meet her. If she had not married Lu Boyan and came dressed nicely to this event, but instead wore her white robe and dissected bodies in the autopsy room, who would come especially to meet her? Tang Yulan saw that it was about time and did not want everyone to bring up Su Jianan's mother and make her sad. She called Lu Boyan over and asked him to take Su Jianan away. Lu Boyan could see that his little monster was a little sad and asked softly, What's the matter? Su Jianan shook her head and before she could say anything, she heard a familiar voice coming from behind. Brother Dutton. Law. Chapter 35 Pressing Against the Wall and Kiss You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. It was a sweet and gentle voice that sounded as if a gust of wind would break it. In Luo Xiaoxi's words, women would feel triggered when they heard such a voice. But it was a different story when men heard it. Su Yuanyuan pranced up to Lu Boyan like a naive young lady and said, Brother. In. Law, I saw you the moment I entered. Then, she seemed to have just noticed Su Jianan and said, Eh. Sister, did Brother. In. Law bring you here? I heard that you were surrounded by a group of high. Schoolers last time. Were you injured? Mom and I were very worried about you. She blinked her long false lashes and the worry in her eyes which had been enlarged by eyeliner looked especially realistic. She's a good actress. Su Jianan smiled and held Lu Boyan's hand sweetly. Your brother dot in dot law came just in time. I was not injured. How's your leg injury? Is it all healed? Su Yuanyuan would never in her life forget the shame of being sent to the hospital by ambulance thanks to Su Jianan. A hit of hatred flashed past her eyes for less than 0.1 seconds. An ordinary person would not even be able to catch her vicious expression before her innocent smile returned on her face. She said, it's recovered. Thanks for last time, big sister. She could act pretty well. Su Jianan smiled even more brilliantly, you're welcome. Lu Boyan held Su Boyan's waist and said, Miss Su, please excuse us. He was about to leave with Su Jianan but Su Yuanyuan followed them around with an innocent expression, Brother. In. Law where are you two going? Will you take me along? I don't know anyone else here. Lu Boyan frowned and Su Jianan knew he was unhappy. However, he was a gentleman and would not be impolite toward Su Yuanyuan. How was he going to get rid of Su Yuanyuan? She anticipated it. Lu Boyan saw Su Jianan gloating and narrowed his eyes, suddenly having thought of something. He brought Su Jianan to an empty balcony. Su Yuanyuan followed them excitedly, Brother. In. Law, why have you brought my sister here? Su Jianan was curious as well and she stared at Lu Boyan with her almond shaped eyes. Lu Boyan looked at Su Jianan deeply and moved as fast as lightning. He suddenly pressed Su Jianan against the wall and sucked at her lips. Su Yuanyuan was stunned. Su Jianan was stunned as well. Her eyes were opened wide and she forgot to breathe. Her mind was completely empty but her body felt as if someone had sealed her acupoint and she could not move at all. The only thing she could clearly feel was Lu Boyan's slightly cold lips and his warm breath. His lips felt good and were like poison. It made one want to close their eyes and sink into them. Su Jianan felt as if she was hanging on the edge of the cliff. 
she would be completely shattered if she fell, never to recover again. However, to climb up was too difficult. She had already hung on the cliff for more than ten years. She would have left the dangerous mountains long ago if she could climb up. Su Yuan Yuan only realized that she had reacted wrongly then. She quickly covered her eyes and yelped in surprise. Lu Boyan released Su Jinan leisurely, his long fingers brushing her face gently. You're too beautiful tonight. I could not control myself. He turned around to look at Su Yuan Yuan and asked, Miss Su, do you still want to continue watching? Su Yuan Yuan was so shy she wanted to burrow into a hole. Brother dot in dot law, you're so annoying. She covered her face to hide her jealousy, turned and ran away. Su Jianan was still pressed against the wall dazedly. She was so spaced out, she was like a wooden person. Lu Boyan hugged her and said, Silly, breathe. Su Jianan felt as if she had come back alive, feeling the air entering her lungs once more. She blushed before she spoke and could only say something after a while. Lu Boyan, you, you're too much. Lu Boyan's eyebrows flicked up casually and said, How have I been too much? Hmm. He drawled, seeming especially evil. Su Jianan could not say the three words, You kissed me. She was so angry her chest heaved and she turned to return to the auction. Lu Boyan pulled her back and said, I apologize. If I did not do this, we cannot get rid of Su Yuan Yuan. Su Jianan glared at him. That's an excuse. You're just trying to take advantage of me. Lu Boyan smiled and said, at least I found an excuse even if I wanted to do that. You didn't even bother looking for one. He was defaming her again. When had she taken advantage of him? She could not bear it any longer. Su Jianan said angrily, even if I wanted to take advantage of someone, I wouldn't take advantage of you. She had high expectations, all right. Have you really forgotten what happened when we were little? Lu Boyan stared into Su Jianan's eyes. Then, there's still what happened at the party last month. When they were little, but uh, when they were little. Su Jianan's glare weakened. To Su Jianan who was ten, brother Boyan was different from all other big brothers. She knew all the other brothers since she was little. Only Lu Boyan suddenly appeared in her empty house when she was ten. He was a new and interesting person to her. He only knew then that there was indeed someone as good-looking as her brother in this world. But he said he was going to America less than a month later. She had yet to visit America when she was ten, and did not know how far away it was from a city. Her mother told her that America was on the other side of the earth and one had to take the plane for several hours to get there. Su Jianan cried when she thought of how she would not be able to see Lu Boyan after a ten-dot-minute car ride anymore. She cried badly and Tang Yulan teased her, saying, Jianan, kiss your brother. Kiss him and he won't leave. She often kissed Su Cheng when she wanted something from him, so kissing a brother was not a big deal to her. She ran up to Lu Boyan and hugged him with tears. Lu Boyan had not expected her to be so obedient, so he turned around in surprise and she kissed him on the lips. The adults all laughed loudly while Lu Boyan's expression changed. She was the only one who did not care and held on to Lu Boyan's hand and said, Brother, can you not leave now? Then she wiped her tears away pitifully. Lu Boyan still left in the end and the two had not met again until the day before their marriage. As for what happened at the dinner party last time. She had only kissed him because they were putting up a show, and she had only kissed his face. This. Was this taking advantage of him? She looked at Lu Boyan. She felt wronged, but could not say anything. Have you remembered everything? Lu Boyan smiled and then pushed her against the wall. Now that I'm counting, you still owe me one. Su Jianan's dark pupils turned. I barely touched you both times. But just now you. You. Very long. You're shameless. She raised her beautiful chin slightly like a fighting monster. 
Lu Boyan looked at her pink lips and thought of how soft and sweet they were, just like cotton candy. His eyes darkened and pressed his lips down again. He did not know how long he had wanted to do this for. It was a miracle he could hold it until now. Su Jianan breathed this time and did not freeze up. However, she did not know how to breathe in and out and felt that it was getting difficult to breathe. The air in her lungs felt as if they were all being sucked out by Lu Boyan's tongue. However, Lu Boyan was still not satisfied like that. He held her hand and made her circle them around his waist. He held the back of her head tightly and deepened the kiss carelessly. His lips were not as cold as before and were as hot as his tongue. It was as if he was melting her into water. Su Jianan clutched at Lu Boyan's shirt anxiously. She only remembered much later. Why didn't she push him away? Otherwise, she could also bite him like what they show on the TV. Lu Boyan could sense Su Jianan's intentions and held her waist tightly. He whispered, his breath hot, at her ears, Be good, behave. The moment his warm voice ended, he bit Su Jianan's lips lightly again. Su Jianan felt as if she had been electrified and forgot everything. Her clear almond dot shaped eyes dazed. Lu Boyan smiled and kissed her lips again. He knew what he was doing. He would sink if he had to, and if he lost control, so it would be. Anyway, he only had this chance in this life. This time, Su Jianan completely forgot how long Lu Boyan had kissed her for. When he released her, her lips felt slightly painful. Lu Boyan did not look good either. The corners of his lips were stained with a little bit of lipstick, but it did not affect his handsomeness. What kind of devil was he? A certain devil was feeling satisfied. He placed a hand on the wall while he tried to softly wipe away the lipstick on the corners of Su Jianan's lips with the other. He said, You owed me for more than ten years. I should get some interest back. Su Jianan was speechless. So he had to kiss her for this long. Eh, something seemed wrong, but it seemed as if it was right. When he saw that Su Jianan could not react, Lu Boyan just held her hand. Su Jianan only remembered to struggle after a while. Where are you taking me? Your lip makeup is messy. Lu Boyan brought Su Jianan to the powder room. Rest assured, I wouldn't do anything here even if I wanted to do anything. Su Jianan took out her lipstick and scolded him, gangster. Lu Boyan could not deny it. He noticed that his lips were also stained with lipstick. Even though he could not go out and meet people looking like that, but when he thought that lipstick was of Su Jianan's lips. He did not dislike it that much anymore. He pulled out a wet napkin to wipe away the lipstick and then returned to looking like the regal CEO of Lu Enterprises. Su Jianan was also done repairing her makeup. She kept the lipstick in her bag and glared at Lu Boyan angrily. I've paid the interest, we don't owe each other anything anymore. Her face was suspiciously red and her lips were also slightly swollen. But they were pouted seductively. Lu Boyan looked at her and wanted to take her home. His eyebrows flicked and he asked, So? So, don't try to find another excuse to take advantage of me. With that, Su Jianan walked out. Lu Boyan followed her and caught up with her in two steps with his long legs. He held her hand naturally. Su Jianan wanted to fling his hand away, but Lu Boyan reminded her lightly, everyone is here. Which also meant that they had to start acting again. So Lu Boyan holding her hand was not within the boundaries of taking advantage of her. Su Jianan held hands with Lu Boyan unwillingly and then smiled lightly. Boyan, Jianan. Tang Yulan waved at the couple and said, Quick come, the auction is about to begin. Lu Boyan brought Su Jianan over and sat at the front row. The charity auction officially began. The objects to be auctioned tonight were all donated by guests and philanthropists. There were about 20 items and the auction would end in about an hour and 15 minutes. Su Jianan thought it was just right. She did not have to sit for long. There was a small booklet beside every seat. 
It was the listing of items being auctioned today. Su Jianan flipped through the items and her gaze was affixed on a jade bangle so much so that she could not lift her head. Lu Boyan noticed Su Jianan's oddity and followed her gaze. The name of the person who had donated the bangle was written below. It was Jiang Xueli, her stepmother. He frowned and suddenly heard Su Jianan say, That's my mother's bangle. That she had seen her mother wearing the bangle since she was little. It was said that it was expensive and was passed on to her mother from her grandmother. After her mother's death, Su Jianan wanted to hide it away for her mother but could not find it anywhere. So it was in Jiang Xueli's hands. And she had dared to donate it to charity. Buying the bangle at the auction was the best way to get the bangle back. But the starting price for it was $300,000. She did not have that much money. She could only look for Sui Cheng. She took out her mobile and texted Sui Cheng. Lu Boyan saw everything she was doing and his frown grew even deeper. She had indeed forgotten what he had said. Chapter 36 Lu Boyan bought the bangle at an exorbitant price you are listening at novelfull.audio. The auction progressed rapidly but Su Jianan was not paying attention to it. She kept looking down and texting Su Cheng. Lu Boyan looked at her frostily, seeing when she would think of him. Next, we are auctioning a bangle donated by Mrs. Su. The auctioneer's voice ended and an image of the bangle appeared on the screen behind him. He started explaining the worth of the jade bangle to the people below the stage. The auction for the bangle started but Su Jianan had not received Su Cheng's reply. She had no choice, she could only call Sui Cheng, but could only hear the automated response that his phone was switched off. Someone had already bid 400,000 for the bangle. Su Jianan frowned as she quickly thought. She would not allow the bangle to end up in anyone else's hand today no matter what. 450,000, 600,000, the bids got higher and higher. Su Jianan felt very anxious. Just then, 3 million. A voice rang, not too slow nor fast. The entire place quietened down. The bangle was smooth and its color was good, but it was not worth the exorbitant price of 3 million dollars. Su Jianan looked at Lu Boyan in surprise. Why had he bid for the bangle with such a large amount of money? Was he spending money to help the auction? 3 million going thrice. The auctioneer hammered down. Congratulations, Mr. Lu, you've successfully bid for this bangle. Su Jianan found that she was heaving a sigh of relief for no reason when she heard that. The bangle had been bought by Lu Boyan. That was better than getting it back from someone else, right? The last item up for auction was a small antique and was bought at a high price. The charity auction had raised close to $10 million. Tang Yulan announced that it would be used to help financially needy university students and to support rural education. The charity auction ended and was followed by a celebratory party. Su Jianan followed Lu Boyan and secretly picked at him several times, thinking about how to ask him about the bangle. Lu Boyan allowed her to hold his hand but did not raise the matter about him buying the bangle. Even if she did not know how to ask him for help, she knew how to ask him for the bangle right. After walking around twice, Lu Boyan was called away by some people he knew. Su Jianan saw Su Hongyuan and Jiang Xueli. Her face suddenly grew cold and she headed for Jiang Xueli. Su Jianan's mother's bangle had been discovered by Jiang Xueli by accident after she entered the Su family. She had hidden it away secretly. She knew why Su Jianan was coming for her and could not help but feel ashamed. She hid behind Su Hongyuan, seeking him for help secretly. Su Hongyuan coldly looked at Su Jianan who approached them. He said, with an angry expression, she's your aunt, not your enemy. I finally know why you two got married. Su Jianan stopped, her face full of sarcasm, birds of the same feather flock together. The both of you are shameless, no wonder you ended up together. Su Hongyuan's expression changed while Jiang Xueli was also angered. Su Jianan, it's just a jade bangle. Your mother's been dead for so many years. 
If not for Zhang Shueli, would her mother pass away? Su Jinan's pale hands were clenched into fists. Tang Yulan happened to pass by and sensed the tense atmosphere. She held Su Jinan's hand and asked, Jinan, what's the matter? Jiang Shuili wanted to be friendly to Tang Yulan and she smiled and said, In dot law, nothing happened, we were just chatting with Jinan. Tang Yulan glanced at Jiang Shuili and said, Jinan, Mrs. Su isn't your mother, is she? My mother passed away several years ago. Tang Yulan frowned and then said politely but distantly, Mrs. Su, I thank you for your generous donation on behalf of the children of the mountainous areas. However, you had better not call anyone in. Law. My son had not married your daughter. Excuse me. She brought Su Jianan away. Jiang Shuili stomped her feet angrily, these people are too much. Even though she and Su Hongyuan had had a wedding and received a marriage certificate and were legal husband and wife, she had not managed to enter the social circle of the wealthy women after so many years. The people in the circle had not treated her as Mrs. Su, and they secretly called her the woman Su Hongyuan has on the side. And all these wives hated mistresses the most. She had thought that with Tang Yulan's relationship with their family, her social life would improve. But it seemed that Tang Yulan was not of any hope to her. Jiang Shueli went to look for Su Yuan Yuan angrily and told her what had happened. The innocent look disappeared off Su Yuan Yuan's beautiful face and her eyes were filled with hatred. Su Jianan managed to avoid a disaster the last time she was surrounded. I have not gotten revenge for that yet. I still remember. That's great, we can get revenge for both what happened last time and this time. Jiang Shueli was shocked, Yuan Yuan, what do you want to do? Don't be rash. Su Jianan has a backing now. Wouldn't everything be fine if I make her backing mine? Su Yuan Yuan fixed her makeup, making her skin even more bouncy. She made a smile at the mirror that no man had ever resisted and then left the bathroom in small steps. Outside, Su Jianan was still angry and could not lift her spirits. Tang Yulan sighed and told her to stay on the sofa before leaving. After some time, Lu Boyan who was still standing with a few middle-aged men, suddenly appeared beside her. Stick out your hand. Su Jianan turned to look at him gloomily and asked, What? Lu Boyan had never liked nonsense and pulled on Su Jianan's hand. He put on the bangle he had just ordered someone to send over onto Su Jianan's hand. Her skin was pale and seemed even more glowy with the green jade on. The jade seemed to be made for her. It circled her wrist and seemed especially calm, as if it had finally found a home after traveling for many years. It was rare for a young girl to wear an old jade bangle so nicely. Su Jianan was not in the mood to admire it. She looked at Lu Boyan in shock and asked, You. You bought this. For me. I don't want anything that belonged to Auntie Ning to end up in someone else's hands. Lu Boyan said lightly. Also, you kept sending messages to Sui Cheng just now. Didn't you want to buy the bangle? You saw that. Su Jianan was even more surprised. I thought you wouldn't notice what I was doing beside you. She was the one who didn't notice anything. She would be able to see him looking at her even if she just turned her head slightly. Lu Boyan's gaze was searing hot as he said, Su Jianan, have you forgotten what I said? Su Jianan blinked confusedly, you, you said many things to me. Which one are you referring to? I already told you that I should be the first person you think of if anything happens in the future, and not Su Cheng. Lu Boyan said. I was sitting beside you just now, so why did you call a phone that was switched off? That statement, Su Jianan still remembered it. But. It was a special situation. I want money, so I should, of course, look for my brother. She said. But I'll definitely look for you if I get surrounded by people. Your bodyguards look impressive. Dot. Lu Boyan gritted his teeth and said, look for me in the future, even if you just want money. Su Jianan blinked. 
she did not even want Sui Cheng's money, much less Lu Boyan's. Furthermore, it would be troublesome to settle their debts in two years when they get divorced. Lu Boyan seemed to know what Su Jinan was thinking. He narrowed his eyes and said, You're already Mrs. Lu. Don't you think Sui Cheng would be suspicious if you have to ask him for money even just to buy a jade bangle? Su Jinan only reacted then. That's right. If Sui Cheng asked why she didn't get money from Lu Boyan, how should she reply? Should she say she couldn't bear to spend her husband's money? You're so thoughtful. Su Jianan nodded sympathetically. I shall borrow from you if I need to use a lot of money in the future. Rest assured, I will pay you back. Lu Boyan pulled Su Jianan's hand and played with the clear jade bangle. You are already wearing a 3-point million bangle. Your yearly salary is less than 100,000. Will you pay until your next life? You can rest assured. How would I not think of that? Su Jinan said calmly. When I'm no longer Mrs. Lu, I can ask my brother for money. I only ask him for money once in a while, he would definitely be glad to give it to me. And even if he doesn't, he has a few apartments under my name. I'll just sell one of them and be able to pay you back. Her mind was fast when it should not be. Lu Boyan leaned against her dangerously and asked, What about interest? How are we going to count that? Eh, Su Jianan had never thought of it before. She looked at Lu Boyan confusedly, How do you want to count it? Of course, Lu Boyan lowered her head and touched her lips lightly, like this. Su Jianan had not yet reacted when Lu Boyan suddenly kissed her again. Her eyes widened. Lu Boyan only brushed her lips lightly like a feather sweeping against her lips. She blinked and then looked at Lu Boyan dazedly. There are too many people. Lu Boyan smiled and said. We'd better find somewhere with less people to do things like this. Su Jianan regained her wits and touched her lips. Lu Boyan, you're taking advantage of me right now. Who would ask for interest in this manner? Who would? Lu Boyan smiled and said, So what? Confidently. Su Jianan was at a loss for words. Indeed. What could she do if Lu Boyan wanted to take advantage of her? She can't even bite him. They whispered to each other, looked at each other and leaned close to each other. To others, they were intimate and loving. Some people were jealous of the strong relationship between the newlyweds while some were so jealous their eyes burned. Su Yuan Yuan had lived under Su Jianan's shadow for too long and had never felt pleased about it. As long as she could steal Lu Boyan now, no one would dare to look down on her in the future and think that she was not as good as Su Jianan, right? She walked up to Su Jianan and looked at her tearfully and suddenly cried. Sister, how could you? Her voice was tiny and pitiful but was still overheard by others. The gazes of those in the hall all turned towards them. Su Jianan and Su Yuan Yuan became the focus of everyone. This was the effect Su Yuan Yuan wanted. She wanted everyone to know that Su Jianan was not as kind as she seemed. Today, she was going to ruin Su Jianan's high and mighty image. Su Jianan did not know what Su Yuan Yuan intended to do, but she anticipated it. She wanted to see whether Su Yuan Yuan's intelligence had improved from the last time they fought. Chapter 37 A Slap That Tore Her Hopes Asunder You Are Listening at NovelFull.Audio Ever since my mother and I moved in and became part of the Su family, you've been shunning us. You've made things difficult for us in everything we did. My mom had asked me to tolerate you. She said that you were only acting like that because you couldn't accept your mother's death. She even told me that things would get better in time. Su Yuan Yuan was crying in torrents. When she spoke, her voice sounded completely miserable. She stood alone before Su Jinan, the shoulders on her lean and tiny frame quivering slightly. From all perspective, Su Yuan Yuan looked like some kind of socially vulnerable girl who had been oppressed for years. Nobody would be able to quell the feelings of pity evoked by such a sight. Su Jianan kept looking at Su Yuan Yuan's eyes. 
wonder what mascara she's using, Su Jinan thought. Didn't get ruined even after all that crying, dot, but even after so many years, you're still the same. Su Yuan Yuan kept throwing out accusations while making sure that she looked pitiable. You haven't changed one bit. Your mother's death had nothing to do with my mom, and yet you took everything out on her. Fine, let's forget about how you're always looking for ways to cause her trouble. I'll let that pass. But do you have to humiliate her like this today? And in such a place too? Sis. No. I won't be calling you that ever again. Su Jianan, you can't take things too far. I told you ages ago that my mother only gave birth to me and my brother. I don't have a younger sister, Su Jianan said, her eyes holding mild ridicule. You're only starting to get it now. Ha! Sister. What sister? When they were all alone, when there was no longer a need for Su Yuan Yuan to keep up her facade of innocence, she would always use Su Jianan's full name. The way Su Yuan Yuan spoke would always sound like she was the oldest daughter of the Su family instead of Su Jianan. You. Su Yuan Yuan's tears flowed with much greater vigor. You've taken your bullying too far. Su Jianan smiled. Jiang Xueli knew D asterisk MN well that Su Hong Yuan was a married man, and yet she still chose to be with him. She even gave birth to you. They hid their affair from my mother for over ten years. Then, when my mother's health was at its worst, Jiang Xueli suddenly showed up at our house with you. She told my mother that all these years, Su Hong Yuan had another family outside the house. My mother was traumatized and was dead because of it. Su Yuan Yuan, are you still going to deny that my mother's death had nothing to do with you people? Let me tell you something. All three of you are murderers. All of you killed my mother. No, it's not like that. Su Yuan Yuan sobbed in panic. In her current state, she looked nothing but pitiable. It's not like that. My mom had nothing to do with it. An icy smile formed on Su Jianan's lips. Enough, Su Yuan Yuan. You can stop all your acting now. Brother in dot law, Su Yuan Yuan said, suddenly throwing herself at Lu Boyan. Do you see now? This is what Sis is truly like. She isn't a kind person, she. Miss Su. Lu Boyan cut Su Yuan Yuan off coldly. I know my wife's personality and conduct much better than you do. Dot. Su Yuan Yuan was stunned into silence. She even forgot to cry. There is, however, a score between us that I would like to settle right now. Lu Boyan's expression grew darker and darker. Danger leaked from his long and narrow eyes. All of a sudden, a bad feeling formed at the pit of Su Yuan Yuan's stomach. Score. What score? Brother dot in dot law, is there some kind of misunderstanding? Leaking Jinan's personal details and photo on the forum. You call that a misunderstanding? Su Yuan Yuan visibly paled. She stared wide that eyed at Su Jinan, completely incapable of speech. To many people, the memory of Su Jinan's doxing incident was still fresh. But what many people had not expected was that Su Yuan Yuan was the one who had leaked Su Jinan's personal details. It was Su Yuan Yuan's actions that had caused Su Jinan to be assaulted. The pitiable image that Su Yuan Yuan had been trying so hard to fabricate fell apart in an instant. Really can't believe this girl is capable of such schemes. Tisk, TSK. She was even calling, sister, just now. Even I almost believed that her suffering was real. Scheming WH asterisk re. Those words from the crowd had found their way into Su Yuan Yuan's ears. She clenched both fists tightly. A savage look had now replaced the paleness on her face. She had used a newly registered anonymous account to do her dirty work. She did not expect to be found out like this. Lu Boyan angled his head to look at Su Jinan. What would you like to do, he asked, his tone coddling and affectionate. I don't want to see her face, Su Jinan said. 
Lu Boyan nodded and two police officers came in from outside. The officers walked up to Su Yuanyuan and flashed her their IDs. Miss Su Yuanyuan, you're suspected of unlawful disclosure of the personal information of others. Please follow us to the station for follow.up investigations. I'm not. Finally, Su Yuanyuan knew fear. I didn't. It wasn't me. Whether you did or didn't, it's our job to find out. Miss Su Yuanyuan, please cooperate with us. Su Yuanyuan turned away to run, but the police officers were quick on their feet and had blocked her way before she could escape. Miss Su, if you refuse to cooperate, then we have no choice but to cuff you. At those words, Su Yuanyuan stared at Su Jianan in terror. Su Jianan, you can't do this. You can't just send me to the police station. Su Jianan stepped right up to Su Yuanyuan's face and stared her down with cold eyes. In the many times you've provoked me, is there a time where I let you off the hook? Su Yuanyuan's shoulders sank limply like a deflating balloon. The police officers led Su Yuanyuan away with a screaming Jiang Shuili at their heels. The gravity of the situation hit Su Hongyuan the moment he saw his daughter being led away. In a fit of anger, he stalked toward Su Jianan and slapped her in the face. Nobody had seen it coming let alone tried to stop him. A burning sensation began to spread from Su Jianan's cheek. Still, no amount of physical pain could top the hopelessness that had begun swirling in her heart like an unstoppable tempest. A dark and dangerous glint flashed in Lu Boyan's eyes. He stepped forward and shielded Su Jianan behind his own body. He saw the crimson finger marks on Su Jianan's white cheeks. The sight of those marks had appalled him. All of a sudden, a chilling coldness took over his entire comportment, as if he were a wild beast whose scales had been unduly touched. A dark and bone dot chilling aura pervaded the entire room. Others who were standing around them could not help but step back in fear. Everybody knew that things would turn bloody the moment Lu Boyan got angry. Just when everyone was expecting a storm of blood and flesh, Su Jianan reached out and grabbed Lu Boyan's hand. She stepped around Lu Boyan and walked up to Su Hongyuan. Su Hongyuan, from now on, I'm no longer your daughter. Su Jianan's face was expressionless and her voice was flat. From today onwards, all ties between us are severed. We're no longer related to each other. A look of regret flashed across Su Hongyuan's face. At the same time, a crying Jiang Shueli re entered the room. My daughter is arrested. My daughter. Arrested. Jiang Shueli glared at Su Jianan savagely. This is all your fault. Jiang Shueli lifted her arms to strike Su Jianan. A narrow that eyed Lu Boyan caught Jiang Shueli's forearm just as Tang Yulan hurried over. Mr. Su, Mrs. Su, Tang Yulan said, this is my charity night, so if you're here to cause trouble, please take your leave. This place doesn't welcome you. After everything, Su Hongyuan would not have wanted to stay either. He left, taking Jiang Shueli with him. Those in attendance were seasoned elites, all of whom were astute enough to know that the event would be ruined if they allowed the awkwardness to linger in the ambience. So they went back to chattering and laughing with each other as if the untoward incident just now had never happened. Lu Boyan took Su Jianan's hand and led her to the balcony. Even during nightfall, the city's din refused to let up. On the other side of the river, the night was dotted with the financial center's incandescence. Each building held the dreams and aspirations of countless of people. This side of the river was occupied by the Bund whose opulence would make any person go starry.eyed. Miscellaneous pedestrian zones were set up nearby, all of which was bustling with activity. Even during nightfall, the city's din refused to let up. On the other side of the river, the night was dotted with the financial center's incandescence. Each building held the dreams and aspirations of countless of people. This side of the river was occupied by the Bund whose opulence would make any person go starry.eyed. Miscellaneous pedestrian zones were set up nearby, all of which was bustling with activity. Su Jianan took in the entire view of the city from high up. 
It gave her the impression that this city would never allow its inhabitants to stop their activities. Lu Boyan caressed the visible finger marks on Su Jinan's cheeks. Does it still hurt? No. Not anymore. Su Jinan leaned against the railing nonchalantly. There's now a good reason for me to cut ties with him. I've been wanting to do that ever since he killed my mom. It had been nine years since then. In those nine years, there were indeed occasions where Su Jianan was tempted to disown Su Hongyuan. But she never did. She had never thrown out the words. Back then, she still had qualms about disowning her father, and Lu Boyan knew why. But today, the last vestige of hope that she had once held in her heart was sundered by Su Hongyuan's slap. The wind was cold tonight despite the approaching summer. Su Jianan felt the chill right down to her toes in her high heels, causing her to hug her shoulders. Lu Boyan removed his jacket and draped it over her. Su Jianan felt a sudden warmth on her back. She turned around and stared back at Lu Boyan in surprise. Thanks, she said, deciding she might as well just put on the jacket. All this while, she had thought that she would never have the good fortune to experience Lu Boyan's act of chivalry. Oh, yeah. How did you know that the person who leaked my information was Su Yuan Yuan? Did some digging. The night it happened, Lu Boyan had ordered Xin Yuchuan to conduct an investigation. It did not even take 30 minutes for Lu Boyan to obtain the IP address, which was registered to the Su family. From there, it became obvious that Su Yuan Yuan was behind the leak. You knew it was Su Yuan Yuan too. Lu Boyan asked. For the past month, Su Jianan never said anything about it. So Lu Boyan just assumed that she did not know anything. Of course I knew. Su Jianan drew Lu Boyan's jacket closer to her body, inhaling his familiar scent. Other than Luo Xiaosi, nobody knew about my personal details. Also, that photo was taken during my high school graduation. It's always been sitting at the house. Su Hongyuan won't stoop to such things. Jiang Xueli doesn't know how to use the internet. The only one left is Su Yuan Yuan, who has hated my guts ever since we were young. Lu Boyan's brows creased. She's hated you since young. Well, what to do? Su Jianan shrugged, her palms facing up. It's easy for someone who's too excellent or too perfect to be ousted. Smiling, Lu Boyan cradled Su Jianan's face with his long fingers and turned her head towards him. There were clear signs of swelling on her right cheek. Put some ice on it when we get home. Light from the other side of the river washed over them, illuminating Lu Boyan's face. Every time she set eyes on him, Su Jianan thought he looked even more handsome than any other time she had seen him. The sharp contours of his face accentuated his beautiful features to perfection. Unthinkingly, she asked, Lu Boyan, shouldn't there be more people plotting against you? Lu Boyan's brow shot up. They wouldn't dare. Wouldn't dare. Because nobody is better than him. Or is it because those people chose to suck up to him instead? Su Jianan thought. Su Jianan laughed. Then I guess I'm lucky to be married to you. She overdid it with her laughter. A sharp pain pierced through her right cheek. She released a hiss and pressed her palm to her cheek. Lu Boyan frowned again. Then, he offered Su Jianan his hand. I'll take you home. Su Jianan was a bit reluctant. Why go home so early? She had slept from yesterday afternoon until this morning, so she was full of energy. She did not feel like going home at all. So you don't want to go home. Lu Boyan stepped closer to Su Jianan. Then shall we continue that thing we were doing here just now? Just now. The thing we were doing. Su Jianan remembered Lu Boyan's strength, the way his soft lips had covered her own. Crimson crept up her face swiftly and spread through her entire face. Chapter 38 You look very delectable when blushing you are listening at novel full.audio. She looked utterly delectable when she was blushing. 
Two faint patches of pink would spread across her pale skin, as if the cherry blossoms of March had bloomed on her cheeks. Whenever he saw her looking like that, he would feel an urge to reach out to touch her. While doing so, he would kiss her plump and full lips. It took Lu Boy on every fiber of his being to suppress that urge. Let's go home, Lu Boyan said. Blushing, Su Jianan lowered her head and left the balcony in search of Tang Yulan, to whom she bid farewell. Tang Yulan nodded. Going home early to rest might be a good idea. She then turned to speak to her son. Boyan, make sure you put an ice pack on her cheek once you get home. Or else she might not be able to go out tomorrow. I got it, Lu Boyan said, picking up Su Jianan's hand naturally. Mom, we'll be going first. Su Jianan allowed Lu Boyan to keep holding her hand. Even if she tried to struggle, he would not have let her go anyway. Not to mention that his hand felt warm. Having her hand wrapped up in his like this felt very comforting. A ding sounded. The elevator doors opened to the ground floor. Lu Boyan held Su Jianan's hand as they walked through the hotel's front entrance. All of a sudden, they found themselves walking into the frenzied flashing of flashbulbs. Hordes of reporters with cameras and microphones rushed towards them in a stampede. Lu Boyan reacted instinctively by shielding Su Jianan with his body, though it did not change the fact that they were completely surrounded by reporters. Mr. Lu, is it true that you've spent three million during the auction to obtain a bracelet for your wife? Oh. Mrs. Lu, is that bracelet the one you're wearing now? Mrs. Lu, can you tell us what you're feeling at this moment? Before, when Su Jianan had to handle high-profile cases, there had been a lot of reporters at the crime scene too. The only difference was that back then those reporters had not tried to surround Su Jianan. Plus, she had never come face to face with a flashbulb before, so it was inevitable that she would start feeling a little panicky. She clutched Lu Boyan's hand tightly and looked at him helplessly. Lu Boyan guarded her tightly to prevent the cameras from knocking into her. He bent down and murmured into her ear, Don't be afraid. The bodyguards will be here soon. Su Jianan nodded. For some unknown reason, she felt reassured. A reporter thrust a microphone near her lips and bombarded her with a series of questions. Su Jianan had no idea how to answer. She buried her face into Lu Boyan's chest instead. Lu Boyan was taken aback by her gesture. She was like a lost sheep trying to seek protection from him as if she had found a shepherd in him. Just when he was wrapping his arms around her, the hotel security arrived. Make way. All of you make way. The security staff parted the sea of reporters, leaving a clear path for Lu Boyan and Su Jianan. When the driver arrived with the car, they climbed on. The car sped away from the hotel. That was when they knew they had finally shaken off the reporters. Su Jianan sighed in relief. Reporter these days sure are difficult, she said, drawing up the sleeves of the jacket. Then, she stroked the bracelet on her wrist. Lu Boyan, thank you for bringing it back to me. If it were sold to somebody else, I really don't know if I would ever get it back again. Even if it were sold to someone else, one word from Su Jianan, and the buyer would have had the bracelet wrapped up nicely before presenting it to Su Jianan. Lu Boyan would personally make sure of it. It did not matter who the buyer was. After all, something like this would be a huge opportunity for anyone to be in Lu Enterprise's favor. Lu Boyan would never reveal these details to Su Jianan. Don't forget to include the interests, he reminded. Recalling the feather dot like touch of Lu Boyan's lips on her own, Su Jianan felt her face heating up again. But she would not take Lu Boyan's words seriously this time. Pervert. Lu Boyan's lips curled into an enigmatic smile. He had something far more perverted up his sleeves. They got home around 10 p.m. When Uncle Su saw Lu Boyan's jacket draped over Su Jianan's figure, he assumed that the relationship between those two had reached another level. Young master, young madam, is there anything you need me to prepare? Uncle Su asked cheerfully. 
Su Jianan could not think of anything, so she smiled. It's all right. You may go rest for the day. She slipped upstairs and went into her room. Seeing that there was nothing else he could do, Uncle Su began heading towards the servants' quarters to retire for the day. Lu Boyan's voice halted his steps. Lu Boyan wanted him to get an ice pack. Upstairs, Su Jianan entered her bathroom and realized that she still had Lu Boyan's jacket on. The jacket did not fit her at all. It hung from her figure rather loosely. On her body, the jacket looked completely una aesthetic since it did nothing to accentuate her figure. Still, Su Jianan felt wonderful. A subtle but pervasive feeling of pleasure and satisfaction filled her entire heart, as if she had accidentally discovered the world's greatest treasure. Slowly, she took off the jacket and held it carefully in her hands. She breathed in gently. Instantly, Lu Boyan's comforting scent assaulted her nostrils. It was like he was standing right beside her. Su Jinan's face remained buried against the jacket until she became short of breath. She raised her face. The act gave her a glimpse of her own reflection in the mirror. All of a sudden, she snapped out of her reverie. What the hell am I doing, she thought. Now I'm practically a bigger pervert than Lu Boyan. She swiftly hung Lu Boyan's jacket in her wardrobe, moving as though she were in shock. She filled up a bathtub with water. After adding a few drops of essential oil, she slipped into the bath comfortably. This would help cast Lu Boyan out of her mind. Or so she thought. The moment she closed her eyes, memories of their kiss on the balcony came flooding back. She might be imagining things, but she could have sworn that there was a moment when she felt that Lu Boyan was kissing her for real. He was kissing her because he wanted to, not because he needed to create some kind of ruse to throw people off. He felt something for her. At the thought, Su Jianan immersed her whole body in the bath water. How's that even possible, she thought. Lu Boyan isn't in love with me. Stop overthinking. It will only lead to disappointment. After her bath, she blew her hair dry. A knock sounded from her door just when she had settled herself in bed. Come in. Su Jianan had thought it was a servant, but the person walking in turned out to be Lu Boyan. It was already this late, and yet he was here looking for her. A man and a woman being in the same room in the dead of the night. Is this really a good idea, she thought. Su Jianan slipped further into the covers, leaving only her eyes and forehead exposed to Lu Boyan's view. Do you need something? Lu Boyan sat down on the edge of the bed and pressed an ice pack against Su Jianan's cheek. Su Jianan hissed as a sudden coldness assaulted her. Her cheek stung, but the pain faded quickly. She lay there on the bed, appraising Lu Boyan. The man looked incomparably handsome from all angles. In the past, his good looks were always accompanied by an eccentric coldness. But now he was in loungewear, sitting on the edge of her bed, holding an ice pack against her cheek. None of his movements and expressions had the kind of water dot like gentleness often portrayed in prose. Still, Su Jianan felt incredibly touched. She thought he looked far more handsome than all the other times in the past when he had outright amazed her with his looks. She felt her hand slowly letting go of that cliff edge. Fine. Whatever, she thought, if I fall, then so be it. So what if I never recover? Eventually, Su Jianan did not have the courage to wallow in her tender feelings for too long. She took the ice pack from Lu Boyan. I can handle it myself, thank you. Lu Boyan did not make any comments either. He got up to leave. Su Jianan called out to him, wait. His steps halted and he turned around. What's wrong? Suddenly, Su Jianan regretted her decision. She shook her head. Nothing. Good night. Rest early. He left shutting her door on his way out. Su Jianan removed the covers from her body and got up. She opened up her wardrobe and took out his jacket. Just now, she had wanted to return his jacket to him. 
but a greedy part of her had decided to keep it, even if it was just for one more day. She was not brave enough to wallow in the tender feelings he had incited within her. But this jacket, one that was filled with his scent, was something that she did not know how to resist because once she closed her eyes, she could almost feel him with her. The scent was so reminding that she could lie to herself that he was still here. Lu Boyan went downstairs for a glass of water. Uncle Su approached him. The police station called. They have detained Su Yuan Yuan. But she'll probably be released tomorrow when Su Hong Yuan walks in with a bribe. Young master, what do you think? Call the chief. Lu Boyan set down the glass. Su Yuan Yuan will not be released no matter what. Understood. When Uncle Su called the chief, he found out that Su Yi Cheng had been pressuring the police too. According to the chief, Su Yuan Yuan would not be released no matter how much money Su Hong Yuan spent. Lu Boyan smiled. Su Hong Yuan was right about one thing. Su Jianan was Su Yi Cheng's only weakness. Touching Su Jianan would bring much greater consequences than provoking Su Yi Cheng himself. With the way things had played out, it seemed to Lu Boyan that Su Yi Cheng was capable of protecting Su Jianan after all. So why would he come to Tang Yulan for help that time? Why did Su Yi Cheng agree to Tang Yulan's proposal of having Su Jianan marry him? Shen Yuchuan had once told Lu Boyan that Su Yi Cheng might be trying to put himself in Lu Boyan's favor. But with Su Yi Cheng's capabilities and accomplishments, he had long since moved past the need to kowtow to anyone. Plus, Su Yi Cheng was not the type to suck up to people at all. There had to be something that he was missing in all this. The following day, when Su Jianan was typing an autopsy report, someone came in and told her that a woman named Miss Jiang was here to see her. Could it be Jiang Shuili, she thought. Su Jianan went out and found that it was, indeed, Jiang Shuili. Jiang Shuili looked like she had been up all night. Her face seemed pale and ashen. She looked unwell. Jiang Shuilie launched herself at Su Jianan the moment she saw the younger woman. Jianan, I was wrong. I admit that I was wrong. I have done your mother wrong. You can do to me whatever you wish. Just please let Yuan Yuan go. She's only 24. She's the daughter of the Su family. She absolutely can't afford to have criminal records. Jiang Shuili begged desperately, all the while looking like a completely different person from the harsh, arrogant woman she had once been. I'm not a judge. It isn't up to me whether or not she gets released, Su Jianan said, her face devoid of any expression. Mrs. Su, rather than coming to see me, you should go look for a good lawyer. Who knows you might be able to reduce the number of days she has to spend at the detention center. All of a sudden, Jiang Shuili burst into anger. Su Jianan, you're doing this on purpose. You want my daughter to have a criminal record. You're trying to wreck her. It was against the law to violate and disclose the privacy of others in the first place. Su Yuan Yuan knew that as well, yet she still did it just so she could get her revenge on Su Jianan. Obviously, Su Yuan Yuan deserved her punishments. What Su Jianan could not understand was how this could ever be construed as her trying to wreck Su Yuan Yuan. Su Jianan could not stand to have this conversation with Jiang Shuili any longer. She turned around to head back to the office. In a fit of madness, Jiang Shuili grabbed a vase from a table and hurled it violently at Su Jianan. Jianan! Jiang Shaokai yelled. He had just been entering the building when he saw the situation. He had reacted instantly and pulled Su Jianan away from harm. There was a loud smash. The vase had missed Su Jianan. Pieces of broken vase scattered on the floor. A few police officers came up quickly and subdued Jiang Shueli. Let me go. Jiang Shueli struggled for dear life. I'm going to kill this despicable B asterisk TCH today. Su Jinan's vision sliced through the air like an ice scalpel. Aunt, are you doing this so that you can accompany Su Yuan Yuan in detention? If you are, I can make it happen right this instant. 
Jiang Shueli paled instantly. All of a sudden, she became more of a law-abiding citizen. Su Jian'an said icily, If you're not, then get out of my sight. Never before had anyone seen such a scary version of Su Jian'an. Unnerved, Jiang Shueli found herself unable to look Su Jian'an straight in the eye. Turning around, she scrambled out of the police station. Jiang Shaokai pulled Su Jian'an aside. Are you hurt? Su Jian'an glanced at her left foot. Today, she wore a pair of cropped pants, which exposed a few centimeters of skin just above her ankle. When the vase shattered just now, several shards had cut her ankle. Thread-like bloodstains looped around the pale skin of her ankle. The blood had dripped down and stained her shoes. It was quite an alarming sight. It's no big deal. Just have to disinfect it, that's all. Su Jianan patted Jiang Xiaokai's shoulder. Thanks. The blood would have been from my head if it weren't for what you did. Treat you to lunch today. Jiang Xiaokai stared at the bloodstains on Su Jianan's ankle for a moment. Then, Jiang Xiaokai looked as if he had discovered some sort of hidden treasure. Let's head back to the office. I've got something to tell you. Privileged Mr. Jiang Master was most adept at being capricious, so Su Jianan was left clueless as to what the man had in mind. Suspicious, Su Jianan trailed after him to the office. Chapter 39 Undisguised Care All Day You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Jiang Shaokai, what exactly do you want to tell me? Su Jianan asked as soon as she entered the office. My mom told me about what happened at the charity auction. With two fingers, Jiang Shaokai pushed Su Jianan's face from side to side. He began examining her cheek. Were you really slapped by Su Hongyuan? How come there's no swelling? Seriously? This guy wants me to show up at the office with half my face swollen like a pig, she thought. Su Jianan pushed Jiang Shaokai's hand away in one movement. Lu Boyan gave me an ice pack when we got back. It won't swell. Sorry to disappoint you. Jiang Shaokai folded his arms across his chest. All of a sudden, he smiled. Have you ever heard of Lu Boyan caring about others enough to give them an ice pack? The change in subject had come so suddenly that Su Jianan's brain had trouble keeping up. It took her a while to recover from her confusion. But when she did, she asked, What are you trying to say again? Let's make a bet. I'll make a call to Lu Boyan to tell him that you're hurt. See if he'd come running here like his ass is on fire. Jiang Shaokai snatched Su Jianan's phone and keyed in a pin for her lock screen. Oh, by the way, I should tell that Lu Boyan's probably very busy right now. I heard from my dad that Lu Enterprises is currently negotiating a $100 million deal. Sounds exciting when you think about it, isn't it? Jiang Shaokai, stop fooling around. Su Jianan made a grab for her phone. What are you afraid of? Jiang Shaokai pulled up her contact list. With this call, you'll finally be able to find out if Lu Boyan cares about you, isn't it? Yesterday, Jiang Shaokai's mother had told him that Lu Boyan looked like he was about to skin Su Hongyuan alive after Su Jianan was slapped by Su Hongyuan. After that, Lu Boyan's behavior nothing but proved just how much he cared for his new wife. Was it not the uncertainty regarding Lu Boyan's true feelings for her that had got Su Jianan so worked up? Jiang Shaokai just wanted to help Su Jianan clear up the mystery. While he himself could sort out his own thoughts. Su Jianan had stopped attempting to grab her phone back. She stared at Jiang Shaokai hazily. Anticipation and fear filled her eyes. It was true that after yesterday, after Lu Boyan had kissed her, she was now even more curious about Lu Boyan's true feelings for her. But what if it was all just an illusion? What if she had just been deluding herself into thinking that Lu Boyan felt something for her? If that was the case, then she would rather remain in the dark forever. Stop lying to yourself. You want to know. It was as if Jiang Shaokai had seen through her. He found Lu Boyan's number and hit dial. 
The phone rang for quite a while before Lu Boyan's voice came blaring through. Jianan. Su Jianan felt as if her heart was about to leap out of her body from her throat. This is Jiang Shaokai, he said calmly, shooting Su Jianan a look that had, you are such a loser written all over it. Jiang Shueli came looking for Jianan just now. Jianan got hurt. It's best if you take a trip down here. The call was dropped immediately. Lu Boyan did not even say a word. Not even if it was to ask about the state of Su Jianan's injury. Jiang Shaokai did not miss the disappointment that had flashed across Su Jianan's eyes. Poking her forehead a few times, he said, It's like you've lost all your spunk after marrying Lu Boyan. You don't even have the guts to make a bet like this. Now you just wait and see if Lu Boyan would come running here. Su Jianan snatched her phone back. All of a sudden, Lu Boyan's words came to mind. Everyone should know their own place. What exactly was she to Lu Boyan? She was just his wife on paper. At the moment, he was in the middle of a $100 million negotiation. As if he would abandon his negotiations and come running to her just because she got a little hurt. The more she thought about it, the more she regretted not stopping Jiang Shaokai from making the call. Jiang Shaokai, if you pull this kind of stunt again, I'll tell your future wife just how many exes you have, she threatened. So. What does it even matter? Jiang Shaokai laughed haughtily. There are still a lot of things about me that you don't know anyway. Dot. Su Jianan was rendered speechless. Fine, you win, she thought. She held her phone in her hand and toyed with it for a long time before deciding to give Lu Boyan another call. This time, it was to tell him that the previous call from Jiang Shaokai was just a joke. Sitting nearby, Jiang Shaokai began laughing at Su Jianan in ridicule. Coward. I bet you're just worried that he won't come. Yes. She was scared that he would not come. So it was better for her to tell him not to come. That way she could at least use it as an excuse to comfort herself. Her finger swiped at the screen and tapped the green icon to make the call. Then, she heard the soft ringing of the familiar default ringtone somewhere in front of her desk. Su Jianan raised her head and saw Lu Boyan standing before her desk with his phone in hand. His chest was heaving slightly as if he had been walking in haste. Sweat dotted his forehead as though they would start pouring out any second. In that instant, Su Jianan forgot to breathe and her heart skipped a few beats. She was moved, even more so than the first time she had met Lu Boyan when she was ten. Lu Boyan walked around her desk and pulled her up from her seat. Where are you hurt? Is it serious? All of a sudden, Su Jianan was at a loss of words. Act. Act. Actually, she stuttered. Actually, it was just a minor cut. Technically, it would not even be considered as an injury, but Lu Boyan. He actually came. Ednell.co right now, she felt guiltier than a thief who had been caught with his hand in a cookie jar. Lu Boyan thought she had been badly hurt, so he carefully examined Su Jianan from head to toe. Finally, he noticed a thread-like bloodstain on her ankle. Just here. Su Jinan's guilt intensified. She wiped her forehead only to find that she had not been sweating at all. Mm, -hmm, she said. Actually it isn't serious at all. I, Jiang Shaokai was joking with you. She was not sure if she had imagined it, but Lu Boyan's expression seemed. Relieved. Ugh. This is practically the same as lying to him. He should be pissed off, right, she thought. Mr. Jiang, Lu Boyan said, suddenly looking at Jiang Shaokai. Su Jianan thought he was about to get even with Jiang Shaokai. Wanting to explain things, she quickly grabbed Lu Boyan to hold him back. But Lu Boyan's next words were not what she had been expecting at all. Thank you for telling me about Jianan's injury, he said. The long legs that had been Jiang Shaokai's pride and joy planted themselves on the desk. Jiang Shaokai's grinned brazenly. You're welcome. Lu Boyan turned back around. 
Is it lunch time yet? He asked Su Jianan in a low voice. Su Jianan nodded. Lu Boyan picked up her hand. Follow me somewhere. I have something to tell you. Outside the police station, Lu Boyan waited for Su Jianan to get into the car first. Then he stood beside the door and asked, Do you have some change on you? How much? Su Jianan pulled out her purse. Much to her surprise, the look on Lu Boyan's face was that of utter confusion. I don't know, he said. In the end, he decided to just bring her whole purse with him. He walked into the pharmacy beside the police station. Moments later, he walked out carrying a small bag, which he handed over to Su Jianan together with her purse. Take care of the wound, he said. When Su Jianan peered into the bag, she saw a bottle of antiseptic and a pack of adhesive bandage. He wanted change to buy these, she thought. No wonder he didn't know the exact amount. The wound was trifling, which was why it did not take long for Su Jianan to deal with it. Using some wet wipes she had taken out from her bag, she began cleaning the blood stains on her shoes. What do you want to tell me about, she asked. Lu Boyan leaned towards her and fastened her seatbelt for her. Then, he started the car wordlessly and drove off. Su Jianan did not bother asking again. The car sped along the road for ten minutes before it pulled up in front of a western restaurant. Western restaurants were typically associated with romantic gestures, especially a place like this one, which had made its name across the entire city due to its extortionate pricing. Feeling a surge of excitement, Su Jianan looked at Lu Boyan. So you brought me here to romance me. Lu Boyan looked at Su Jianan lazily. Do you want to be romanced? In her head, Su Jianan tried picturing Lu Boyan acting romantic with that icy expression of his. She shook her head. Nah. Forget it. Just tell me if you have something to say. They entered the restaurant. The manager greeted them and led them to their table. He even took it upon himself to serve them tea. Mr. Lu, should we bring out your order? Lu Boyan hummed his agreement and spread out his napkin. His movements were practiced and elegant, though she had never seen him practicing before. It was as though he had been born with the innate ability to move and act like a perfect gentleman. So good looking that it should be considered a sin. Su Jianan teased inwardly. A uniformed waiter brought out two plates of steak. Lu Boyan was having the medium well sirloin steak while she was having well done Kobe beef. Su Jianan blinked. How do you know that I prefer my steaks well done? Lucky guess, Lu Boyan said casually. Actually, I used to find medium well steaks acceptable, Su Jianan said, cutting into her steak. But once I began my training as in me, I only eat well done ones. Otherwise, I'll be thinking about corpses whenever I cut into a piece of steak. Lu Boyan grimaced and shoved a piece of steak into Su Jianan's mouth to shut her up. I have a business trip to the US. Su Jianan chewed the steak and swallowed. Oh. When are you leaving? My flight's tonight. At eight. Um. Have a safe. Trip. Don't go running around when I'm not here. Lu Boyan urged. It's likely that Su Hong Yuan would come looking for you. Finally, Su Jianan was distracted from her stake. Her elegant brows creased into a frown. Why would he come looking for me? Jiang Xueli was detained on the charge of assaulting a police officer. Su Jianan went stock dot still. But she had asked Jiang Xueli to leave this morning. She stared at Lu Boyan. You're the one who put her there. Fine by me. Could save me the trouble of dealing with her. She paused, and then she asked, um. You. When are you coming back? When she thought of Lu Boyan's absence, she suddenly felt as if her life was missing something. Lu Boyan had thought that she would not even bother to ask. A ray of sunshine pierced through his dark mood. Next Wednesday. Is there anything you like? I'll ask someone to get it. Su Jianan shook her head. 
I'm craving that vanilla ice cream from the handmade ice steam stall beside our school. It's not like you can bring something like that back. After a brief pause, she asked a bit hesitantly, before you came by the station, what were you doing? I was negotiating a deal. Lu Boyan looked at Su Jianan. It was impossible to tell if he was actually smiling. When your colleague called to say that you're hurt, I ditched everything and left. And, and then. Su Jianan felt her bravado slowly slipping away. And then. They might think that I wasn't taking the deal seriously and decide to call off the deal. Lu Enterprises will miss out on several hundred millions worth of profit. I, I didn't do it on purpose. Su Jianan could not imagine what a few hundred million worth of money was equivalent to. She only knew that if she were to throw away a million a day, it would still take a long time to reach even one of those few hundred million. At the thought, she started to feel great fear, so much so that she could barely hold on to her fork and knife without dropping them. It's okay, Lu Boyan said. His tone was gentle, which led Su Jianan to think that he had somehow found a way to secure the deal. She sighed in relief. You'll just have to pay the losses, that's all, Lu Boyan said. Su Jianan nearly fell off her chair. Even if she sold all the houses that Su Cheng had bought for her, she could not even scrape together a hundred million. How the hell was she supposed to pay him? By selling him her body. Chapter 40 Actually He Does Care About Her You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Repaying with Her Body. Su Jianan was shocked a bit by herself. With her head shaking as if it were a rattle, she rebuked. No. She was doomed. When on earth did she end up so degraded? What are you saying no to? Lu Boyan asked her comfortably. Su Jianan was at a loss all of a sudden. She would rather die than let Lu Boyan know what she was thinking about. Or the game would indeed end. She put on a long face then and said, hundreds of millions is too hard for me. What on earth do, do you want me to repay with? Looking at her expressively, Lu Boyan quirked up the corner of his mouth and replied. I will give you the answer in the future. All of a sudden, Su Jianan felt that Lu Boyan was a hunter who had successfully trapped his prey. The reason why he was staring at his little prey tenderly was not that he had wanted to set it free, but that he was thinking over how to fully take advantage of the little prey in one time. She was all trembling, when she was back to the office, she would definitely get even with Jiang Shaokai. If not for Jiang Shaokai, how could she have ended up as Lu Boyan's little prey? After she was back to the police bureau, she saw Jiang Shaokai watching some document with his long legs crossed. Su Jianan went over and snatched the document over. Replying with a, Yoho, Jiang Shaokai stared at her up and down and said, What has Lu Boyan done to you? He wants me to make compensation. Su Jianan told Jiang Shaokai that Lu Enterprises had already suffered hundreds of millions losses and then she looked at him bitterly. It's all your fault. I had already owed him three million. And your one call ended up adding a few more zeros to the number of the debt. You idiot. Jiang Shaokai despised Su Jianan and replied. For the sort of person like Lu Boyan, he is always in charge of the initiative and he is the one who has the final say on whether the cooperation deal is done or not. He dumped the cooperation partners like this and ran to your rescue then. When he went back, he would at most apologize to his counterparts and surrender some profit or whatever, and then the whole issue would be over. As for the losses or whatever, he is just hoaxing you. And you actually believe him. Su Jianan replied confusedly and asked, why would he deceive me? You are so silly that you can be easily hoaxed. Bang! Su Jianan gave Jiang Shaokai a crack on his head with the documents forcibly. Jiang Shaokai opened the front camera of the mobile and said while putting his hairstyle in order. As a matter of fact, you should owe me thanks. If it had not been me who had made the call over, shouldn't you have been able to be certain of the fact that whether Lu Boyan cared about you or not? Su Jianan thought of Lu Boyan's look when he hurried over all of a sudden. For that short moment, 
he lost all of his consistent elegance and calmness. Anxiety filled all over his eyes. He should be concerned about her then. As a matter of fact, every time when she met with a mishap, it was always Lu Boyan who came to her side in time. So with a time when she had been abducted by brothers of Xiao and when she was surrounded on the road by that group of high dot school students. But speaking of the fact that Lu Boyan cared about her, she always held a dreamlike sense. It seemed that everything around had all become no true at all. Now what? Jiang Shaokai stared at Su Jianan smilingly. Are you planning to let go of the one you have had a crush on for so many years and shift your sweet love to Lu Boyan? Su Jianan was lost for a moment and then glanced at Jiang Shaokai with hate. You are indeed such a more and more active gossip. She went back to her seat and opened her computer, pretending to continue her report with a brave face put on. Actually, she had her mind fully stuffed with Lu Boyan, Lu Boyan, and Lu Boyan. How could Jiang Shaokai not see through Su Jianan's pretending? He sipped an espresso smilingly, while his eyebrows suddenly clinched together. How f asterisk asterisk kingly bitter it was. But he had been drinking espresso for so many years. How was it today that he started to consider it bitter? On this exact day, Jiang Shaokai finally was certain of something and also he was forced to give up on something. Separated with Jiang Shaokai by just one table, however, Su Jianan had no idea about how great the waves she had brought to Jiang Shaokai's world were. After leaving office, Su Jianan went back home on time. Aunt Li, the servant came to her hurriedly. Young madam, I was packing up young master's stuff, can you please come upstairs to see whether it is okay? I am not good at packing. It was previously Aunt Lu who had been in charge of this and it happened that Aunt Lu was taking a break today. Following Aunt Li into Lu Boyan's room and taking a look, Su Jianan found out that actually the stuff was packed really in good order, but the relative outfits were completely wrong. She smiled and said, Aunt Li, you go and help me find a few transparent clothes bags. You leave this to me. As if having seen the Savior coming to earth, Aunt Li nodded merrily and went to look for the bags. Su Jianan put all the clothes in the luggage case back to the locker room and hung them up, rematching out two business suits and one leisure suits. The moment Lu Boyan was at the room door, he then saw Su Jianan coming out from the locker room with his clothes, casting them all on the bed all at once and then bending over to pack them suits by suits. She first folded the suits nimbly and matched out the shirts with the ties. Even for the cuff and the pocket square, she even picked them out and placed them ready. She carried out every step so carefully and conscientiously that she had saved a lot of trouble for him. The golden sunlight poured from the French windows beside her and spread out in the room soundlessly. She was quietly and attentively dealing with his clothes. With the lines of her side face clear and graceful against the sunset and her long and long eyelashes looking like fluttering butterflies while blinking, people just could not help getting their heartstrings tugged towards her. Lu Boyan felt relaxed all over for no reason at all. If every day afterward was repeated in this similar way, it seemed to be no nuisance at all. Aunt Li came upstairs with the bags and she saw Lu Boyan standing at the room door instantly. His expression was rarely that soft and comfortable. For all these years, Lu Boyan was like a working machine which was powered dot up for 24 hours. It seemed that he was always busy and his eyebrows were always scowling. It was the first time that he had been that relaxed. She glanced at Su Jianan inside the room again and suddenly she seemed to have understood something. Handing the bags over to Lu Boyan, she signaled him to give the bags to Su Jianan. At that time, it happened that Su Jianan had folded all the clothes ready. Still not seeing Aunt Li come over, she urged randomly while lowering her head. Aunt Li. Lu Boyan handed the bags over to Su Jianan. She took the bags over, put the already matched clothes into the bags, one bag for one suits. Then she placed them in the luggage case orderly. Till then did she let out a sigh of relief and stand up. She then saw Lu Boyan all of a sudden. Her legs falling under her, she almost stumbled on the floor. 
Lu Boyan held her up agilely with a faint smile playing on his face. I come back and that's all. Is it necessary for you to be that happy? Having not recovered from the shock, Su Jianan asked, when did you come back? The time when you are out holding the clothes. It was not till Su Jianan thought back carefully and was certain that she had not done anything disgraceful that she let out a sigh of relief. Aunt Lee said she was not that good at packing, then I, just helped her conveniently. Don't overthink. In fact, she did not want to help Aunt Lee that much. She was worried that Lu Boyan would act with confusion over there or whatever others. Lu Boyan circled her waist and cuddled her towards himself. What would I think from your perspective? Um. Su Jianan strove to push backward, in order to widen the distance between Lu Boyan and herself. However, her face heated up inevitably. She replied. How would I, know what are you thinking about? Breaking herself from Lu Boyan's trapping lightly, she ran out of the room with her head lowered. Looking at the little praise figure which was like the wind, Lu Boyan raised up the corner of his mouth faintly and he was in an extremely good mood. With his flight taking off at 8 o'clock, he would leave after he finished dinner. The driver was already waiting for him outside. Uncle Su took Lu Boyan's luggage case downstairs and asked the servants to place them on the car. It was until Su Jianan saw Uncle Su and others busy preparing for Lu Boyan's departure that she started to realize the fact that Lu Boyan was leaving. While it seemed there had been something surging continuously inside her, her heart and her heart had been gradually emptied. How could it end up this? Young master, all is ready. Uncle Su walked over and said, now you can leave for the airport. Hum. Lu Boyan glanced at Su Jianan and his little prey was looking at him too. Her crystal clear peachy eyes looked somewhat confused. It seemed that she had not figured out what had happened. He held his little prey's hands and led her outside. It was until in the car that Su Jianan started to realize. Lu Boyan, I can't go with you. I have to go to the office tomorrow. Lu Boyan looked at her with his eyebrows scowling. Seeing me off to the airport and you going to the office tomorrow, are they connected? Ah. Su Jianan blinked her eyes over. She had thought Lu Boyan was going to abduct her to the U. S or, do you want to accompany me there? You have overthought. Su Jianan said with a solemn look, why should I accompany you there? Lu Boyan smiled and neither did he haggle over with his little prey. He simply asked her then, have you kept what I said at noon in your mind yet? What have you said? Su Jianan was totally lost. Dot regarding at noon, what she remembered the most clearly was that Lu Boyan had scared her that it was due to her that Lu Enterprises had suffered hundreds of millions losses, which possibly would become her nightmare. Squinting his eyes and wearing a dangerous look, Lu Boyan pressed on towards Su Jianan. Have you really forgotten them all? The familiar male smell crept towards her. For a few moments, Su Jianan's brain was in a piece of blankness. Then her heartbeat started to lose control again. It was until after she had been thinking for a long time that she began to remember dazzled. You told me not to run about. Lu Boyan was a bit of content. And others. Others. Su Jianan thought for a while and replied with a, hum. Are you going to remind me that I have caused hundreds of millions losses to Lu Enterprises and whatever others? You liar, I have known it all. You actually didn't suffer that much loss. Who told you that? Was it Jiang Shaokai? Lu Boyan doubted that Su Jianan would have become clever all of a sudden. Dot. Su Jianan was silent. But her expression was solemnly like acquiescence. You actually would believe in Jiang Shaokai's words that much. Lu Boyan pressed on towards Su Jianan closer for a few more distances. His look became more dangerous. Having got nowhere to step backward, Su Jianan had to push Lu Boyan away. Of course I trust what he said, he is not that bad as you are. Neither did Lu Boyan get angry. He clutched Su Jianan's hands instead. Where on earth I am bad at? 
Hum, point them out for me. It was indeed vicious of him to behave like a hooligan in the current effortless way. However, where could Su Jianan point towards him? She straightly pointed in an irresponsible way. Here, here and here, you are all bad wherever. Dot. Lu Boyan did not say anything and stared at Su Jianan with a smile on his face. Su Jianan was confused, Lu Boyan shouldn't have made a concession that easily. She looked at where she had pointed towards. Her face burned red like a fire instantly. He eyes must have been blind. She could have pointed towards his other parts and all would be good. Why did she just point at his that exact part? Lifting up the corner of his mouth, Lu Boyan said, since that you had never used that part, how would you know it is bad? The evilness in his voice virtually could make people's heart pop out of their chest. I could for her entire life, this time was the time when Su Jianan felt the most embarrassed. She closed her eyes and said, Lu Boyan you go away. Lu Boyan looked at his little prey struggled in the corner with interest and he continued teasing her. How about you trying it out after I am back from the business trip? Su Jinan opened her eyes and stared at Lu Boyan with her both cheeks blushingly. You are behaving like a hoodlum. It was you who had started it. Su Jinan was speechless. You think back more carefully about what else I have told you. Lu Boyan smiled gently. If you still cannot figure it out, then I would do more than behaving like a hoodlum. Then could he turn into an authentic hooligan? Su Jianan trembled and thought over the likewise words of, don't run around, for a long while. Then she asked uncertainly, come to you if I have problems. The look of satisfaction finally appeared on Lu Boyan's face. He asked, would you forget that in the future? Su Jianan shook her head hard. After such a drama, let alone in the future, never would she forget it for her entire life. Lu Boyan stroked the little prey's head. Good girl. The little prey was speechless.